they don't book. No? If the exam same thing, they don't know they don't book. So they fail exam. So now I did video lah. Huh? And then today we also got one video class, huh? IES 36 impairment post action tutorial. So we will upload that after today's class. Then coming Saturday, right? You do not actually need to, to rush for it. If you can finish watching the 38, uh, sorry, 36, huh? If you can finish watching 36 before Saturday, that would be great. But if for whatever reason you cannot comply, then it's okay. Uh, during the weekend, you can spend time to look at this 36 because it is independent from other chapters. Uh, Alright, so let's start now. IES 40, Investment Property. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, just don't suffer in silence here. Alright, Investment Property. Now, um, i give you a head up first. Uh. If we have land and building, okay, so let's write something on top here. If we have land and building, uh, or own use. So own use could be your office, uh, could be your factory, uh, own use. Uh. That one is PVE. Uh. Land and building for investment income. Yeah, something wrong with my writing tablet. Huh? Sometimes cannot get detected. Okay. For investment income, that is uh, investment property huh? today's topic. Right, this word property eh, can sometimes create some confusion here. Eh? Okay, let me do a highlight for you to see eh? property. Um, I'm not sure whether you're aware about this, is that when sometimes people want to climb up in the corporate ladder, so that means they want to get promoted eh, in the office and this that they purposely go and attend courses for business English. Okay, business English. Now, business English is different from the normal English. Even I also didn't attend the business English course huh? because whatever I know is good enough because I know a lot of accounting terminology. So one example of business English is that when we talk about property, right, it's different from how we use English in our daily conversation. Like for example, I'm holding this mouse, uh, that, 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 uh, those at home also see, uh, this mouse, this is mine. It's not a college one. So I can also say uh, this mouse is my property. Daily English, yeah. but accounting and business you cannot, you know, because property in business and accounting that means land and building. So you know this website called iProperty.com, right? iProperty.com inside only got land and building. You cannot find mouse here. You cannot find laptop inside iProperty.com. So that is the meaning, uh, Property, it means land or building. That's all. Okay, so I can the highlight here. Property means land or building, uh. So I think the only interaction we have of this accounting standard with PPE is land and building only. Huh? Because PPE got land and building, here's got land and building. But PPE will have more varieties. So PPE we got computer, we got motor vehicle, we got furniture, but investment property we don't have. So what is investment property based on the definition of the accounting standard? Uh, land on a building held as an owner or as a lessee. Now tonight we don't talk about lessee. Huh? Lessee is under IFRS. 16 leases. So we have another class uh, somewhere in the middle of September, next month, the uh, middle of next month, we'll go through this chapter, IFRS 1.6. So tonight you can only read this as property held as an owner. Let's see, you don't understand yet. Uh, so we don't confuse you to earn rental income or for future capital prestation. Now it can be both together. We buy a building, we rent out to collect rental income, and we wait for five years try the market value. Not nice. We wait for another five, make it 10 years, and then we sell to make the capital appreciation. So that means, uh, in short, the investment property is for passive income. It's not for active income. Okay, passive income. Whereas if you look at the PPE, that one is for active income. Uh. We are using the asset in our main operation. Active income. This is for passive income. Alright, now if you look at the right side here, we've got an example even by the accounting standard. 
the five example and these five uh, are used quite commonly in the exam for the exam to set question. The first one, then help for long-term capital appreciation. Now building can actually achieve this purpose, uh, but it's not given as an example, but it can do the same thing. You buy building and hold it for long term so that next time the value is good, you sell, you get capital gain. But land is, is actually more common. Uh, Okay, land help for long term capital appreciation. Land help for undetermined future use. Very rich company, they buy land but they do not know what to do. Now, this can happen in private company but it's actually more common for a government. Okay, how, how it works is that in the country, we will have land owned by private individual. If you got money, you can buy land. Okay, or it can be owned by a company, or it can be owned by the country. That means no one owns the land. Now, mountain is one good example. Mountain, eh? mountain. So, when the mountain has no owner, it will automatically belong to the country, and is controlled by the government. And you know, government can change every five years, lah. Upon the election, we can change. So, it's not actually owned by the government, but it's controlled by the government of the asset owned by the country, right? So, if we ask the government, let's say now, uh, Sabri is my, uh, is Sabri, uh, that mountain behind my house, uh, What do you want to do with it, uh? Then probably the Prime Minister said, I also don't know, let's let it be. Lah. At the moment, there's no reason to disturb a mountain, isn't it? So those mountains are land held for undetermined future use, which is also classified as investment property. Okay? So private company can have this. They are so rich, they buy land, they don't know what to do. But in fact, this is actually more common for government. Lah. They are holding land, but they do not know what to do with the land. Next one, building lease out under an operating lease. So tonight I will try my best to avoid leases. Uh, hang on, I got a message here. Let's see here. Uh. Okay, for development, government always unfair and no follow market price. They want too bad, that's uh, why no, I'm not in the position. Uh. But next time if I work, go for the election to be MP, you remember to work for me. Uh. I will make sure the price is fair, uh, but at the moment I'm just a, a normal guy, alright? But that's it, uh, if next time you be a government, I think you'll probably do the same as well, <laughs> Okay, coming back here, leases, uh, leases means rental. Lah, uh. But tonight I try to keep everything simple. Lah, okay, so building rented out uh, under an operating lease. So building rented out is investment property. Weaken, weaken means empty. Uh. Empty building help to be leased out soon under an operating lease. So number three, number four looks similar, but number three already rented out. Number four, soon they are, they are planning to, they are looking for uh, people, looking for customer, and they're renting out soon. And last one, property that is being constructed, which is a work in program, eh? or developed. So you are a company, you have this knowledge, you have the resources to construct building by yourself for future use as investment property. That means construct building, eh? for example, to rent out. Eh? So we can build houses and rent out. We can build houses to sell as well, alright? We can build houses to rent out, we can build houses to sell, but then if I write some more things for you to see, uh, um, if the future use, okay, future use uh, is for investment, uh, okay? Then how you classify your WIP, uh, the work in progress uh, is investment property, uh, okay? So while you are constructing, every day you add cost, Material cost, labor cost, overhead cost, you keep on adding so the work in progress gets bigger and bigger every day, isn't it? So that asset is classified as investment property if your future use uh, is for investment purpose. If you're constructing property, future use is for own use. Maybe you are constructing your head office. Maybe you are constructing your own factory. The one is PPE. So the work in progress itself will be classified as PPE. If you construct property to sell, what do you think? Build, sell, build, sell. So what do we classify this as? Anyone in the class at home? Uh, current asset has a name there. It has a name there. Current asset got so many things inside, right? Inventory, inventory, okay? Inventory. The current asset also got receivable, la, deposit, la, prepayment, la, cash and bank balances. Okay? So if you're wanting this, you can jot it down, copy it down on your notes here. Okay, let me 
turn on my spreadsheet first. Huh? Okay, I want to draw something there. I'm explaining you the next point. Okay, so if you have questions regarding the previous point, please ask. Huh? So I turn on my spreadsheet already. I already changed my screen so that those at home can also see. Huh? Okay. Now, if I um, get out on this one. Okay, if I draw two tall buildings like this, huh? and then in the middle got the bridge one. Which building you can think of? Huh? Two tall buildings linked together by a bridge. Okay, I'll see you. Okay. okay, let's see what, what they say. Uh, twin Tower. His name is actually Twin Tower. It's not a concrete name here. Uh, Petronas Twin Tower. I was about to ask who is the owner and you already say it out. Okay, so Petronas is the owner. Okay? Petronas Twin Tower. Now, I don't think Petronas can have enough staff to occupy the two towers. They should will use some units inside and sure they will rent out some units. Okay, so partly own use. Ran up. So now we got problem already, you know, because we know if own use, uh, then the twin tower is PPE. If rent out, then the twin tower is investment property. Now we got mixture of usage. Some own use, some rent out. So this problem, right? The accounting standards say you got to ask Petronas, for example, can the own use portion and the rent out portion be sold separately. Now we are not forcing Petronas to sell, but we are just asking Petronas, based on the law, your property title, whatever law, can you sell the units out separately? I know for condominium apartment, they can do that. Per unit, they can sell. You don't need to sell the whole thing. So with this Petronas, maybe we want to ask Petronas, your twin tower, do you have any law asking you to keep the whole thing and to sell the whole thing if you want? Now let's say Petronas say, no, 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 no law say I must keep the whole thing and no law say I must sell the whole thing. I can choose to sell maybe this whole floor only, uh, two towers, this floor, separately, uh, individually. Now, if you have that, right, then let's look at the accounting standard. Uh. Can the two portions be sold separately if we want to sell? If yes, uh, then each portion will be classified accordingly based on its usage. So you might probably look at uh, a double entry like this. So we're going to debit the PPE, debit the investment property, and credit bank when we acquire the building. So initially, we already split the classification into two. Now, in our last class, uh, I already told you, in F4 exam, they are not asking for detailed knowledge. They just want you to know the surface, the main principle. So if this kind of thing appear in the exam, right, I'm sure the question will let us know the method to segregate the amount. Maybe it's based on floor area. If you've got more floor area used as own use, then there will be more value going to PPE. Uh, less floor area to investment, then uh, less value to investment property. Sometimes the floor area might not be fair, especially you look at tall, tall building, look at all these tall building, the taller, more expensive one, the lower, cheaper one. So I don't think our FY exam will go into that extent to ask you so complicated calculation. I think the worst you can get is just a floor area. If next time you go to SPR, the advanced one, right, they may not tell you a method to do the segregation. They don't tell you. So they want to see what is your reaction. Just like the examiner in SPR, he loves to throw you like an end, throw the end to the water and see how the end swim. He loves to do that one, you know. So in SPR, very often we don't get enough details and we have to exercise our professional judgment to write the answer. They want maybe next next, next time, uh, when I join my class, we can look at that. But FRO, very straightforward one. They will definitely tell us a method. How about if I go back to my spreadsheet here, I give you another example. Uh. Now, I saw things like this before, not sure you have seen it. Maybe yes or so. Now, I have seen a mamak shop, okay? Okay, mamak shop. 
So this is a main entrance here, and at the main entrance there is one small area they ran out to sell phones. So this is a whole mama shop. The entrance is here. Next to the entrance, they rented this one small area to put a counter, getting people to sell phones. So this one is also one example of property partly owned use, restaurant uh, partly owned use, and partly rent out. So let me ask you guys, uh, including those at home, do you think I can separately sell this area? Let me color it first. Uh. The yellow color area, can I separately sell this? It's one shop. Can I just sell that small portion? Cannot. I think a lot of law won't allow you to do that. Just like my house, also the condominium, uh, I cannot just sell one room out. Uh. It's either the whole unit, you keep or you sell. That's all. all right. So in this case, right, the mama shop, some area for own use, some area to rent out, but the portion cannot be sold separately. Eh? So we come back here. If it is a no here, cannot be sold separately, eh? then we will account for the whole thing as 100%. Eh? Entire property is treated as PVE. If significant portion is for owner, there's some work missing out here. It's for owner occupier. Or owner use, eh? uh, own use. Uh, Chua, I think Malaysia maybe no. Eh? The, all this ownership transfer it depends on the city hall. Like in Kuala Lumpur, uh, if you want to sell houses, uh, you need to go through DBKL. Uh. Okay, so anything like sometimes we have this a bit sensitive topic. Uh, uh, the Chinese want to buy house from Malay. So they got Bumi Lock protection, right? You have to go through DBKL for waiver. Can buy one, can buy, but got procedure to go through. Uh, and then got premium to pay also. If you non non boomy buy from non boomy is easier, uh, but boomy from non boomy from boomy a bit difficult. Can do can do, but you have to go through the city hall. But I never recall that in Kuala Lumpur uh, for one shop or one house that uh, you can sell half or a pot. I never recall that uh. Probably no lah, uh, Okay, but like you say uh, depends uh, Maybe other places have, but my knowledge say I never see before. Okay, now coming back here. Uh, so the mama shop example, one small area rented out to sell handphone, cannot be sold separately. So the entire uh, mama shop will be treated as PPE if significant portion. Now the problem with this significant portion, uh, there's no definition. There's no definition by the accounting standard. So it's up to you to decide. Uh, so this is a loophole here. Some people do a creative accounting, a fake account is because of all these things. Uh. The standard never say. So we are free to decide. Uh. But if, if you need a professional judgment, uh, definitely it's not in the FR. We don't need to do that. SPR, yes, but not in the FR. So now I've got two examples here, property A and B. Uh. The white portion represent rent out. The black portion represent the own occupied, which is PPE. Uh, both property cannot be sold separately. So you, you have to keep or sell the entire thing uh, based on the law. Now, if it is like this, uh, I see property A got very little portion for own use. But property B got a lot more. Lah, huh? It's up to our judgment if you think that A is not significant, then A seems like investment property because more portion is for right now. But B, if you decide that it is the, the black color portion, huh? the black color portion, own use, is significant, then B seems like then a PPE. Lah. I have a problem, I hope you can help me. Huh? Okay, currently I'm seeing a condo huh? okay. with four blocks. Of course, I don't own all the four blocks. Huh? Out of the four blocks, I only own one unit. Huh? That also pay until <laughs> the bank loan and all this. Huh? So we have 1,502 units. This is a real case of my condominium. Huh? Then just nearby here, only drive 10 minutes only. <laughs> just now I came from uh, college. Huh? Then I do not know what to eat. I tried to go to a shop, then the shop closed down already. So I went home. <laughs> I went home, say whatever biscuit, uh, fat I eat, and then I come back. It's just 10 minutes past only, uh, here from my house. So 1,502 units. Uh. Now, let's say I need you your help. Uh. If I want to rent 
my unit out, uh, I'm going to compete with my neighbors, right? Now, how many neighbors there? 1,501, because I'm, I'm one already, right? 1,502. So, I'm going to compete with about 1,500 neighbors within the four blocks. And then, if you have been in my housing area, you can see a lot of condominium also. So, that means my competitor is not just these four blocks of 1,500. Units. I also have a lot of neighboring projects. Uh. Got new got old uh. building, uh. you know how the board everything got new new construction and this stuff. So I need your help here. How do I attract customer? That means the tenant, uh. tenant uh. competition is very fierce. You know? So anyone would like to suggest if I want to rent uh, here Tom already are those at home? Advertisement. Uh. Can you be a bit more specific to advertisement? Ah, cheaper rental fee. Uh. Okay, Juliet say cheaper rental fee. Fully furnished. Mm, okay. Cheaper rental, like him more fully furnished. Uh. Very good. Uh. Okay. I think after some suggestion here, I decided to stay for myself. Uh. <laughs> so to rent things out. But, but thanks for your suggestion here. Now, I think uh, provide good service like hotel feel. Okay, let me copy this first. Uh. And I put to the spreadsheet here. Yeah. Oops. Now the suggestion of uh, giving cheaper rental. Hey, oh, I have more. Okay. Now the suggestion of giving cheaper rental uh, is workable only for short term, because let's say the market rental is one thousand ringgit. Let's say one month. If I start to charge only nine hundred, uh, my neighbor can charge eight hundred. Isn't it very really fast one? People will start to react. Then you create a price war already. It's not a long term solution. Uh. Charge cheaper rental. Provide fully furnished also uh, will not create a separate or outstanding advantage to me. If I can put fully furnished, my neighbor also can do. Uh. So I think this provide good service like a hotel feel uh, maybe is one of the good selling points here. Classy environment, this that. Really talking about renovation and this that. Uh. Now I have to first uh, select my target group. Do you want to rent to only single or family without kids or family with kids? You have to select your target group. You cannot be blindly choosing people. One. So let's say uh, my target group is young family with kids or kids. Uh, one or two. Uh, in the big city nowadays, uh, people don't have many kids. Uh, maximum also like two, not more than three. Uh. So I got the suggestion here. One shop payment including rental, water and electricity. So you power everything lah. Uh. One rental to cover everything lah, uh, including the internet and Netflix. So these are even better. Uh, okay. <laughs> so if, if you look at my suggestion here, I select my target group. I want young family with kids uh. So uh, market rental. Okay, market rental is let's say. Uh, I charge RM $3,000. Oh, so this, this will create attention already, isn't it? Hey, what happened to this guy? Uh? Market rental is only $1,000, but I'm going to charge $3,000, you know. So what I will do is, I will cover usage of the rent unit, uh, uh, cleaning. Because this young family, uh, what happened is that the husband and wife could be working, working very hard to pay the rental and maintain certain lifestyle. And then I will do babysitting also. Jaga their baby, wash their backside, and the sheet and all this. Huh? Babysitting. Huh? Uh, I will do cooking also. Provide meal. So that after work, normally after traffic jam and all this, they reach home at 8 o'clock, 8 30 like that. Huh? They can straight away have dinner already. Huh? Uh, and then I will do laundry also. Huh? Because they don't have time to do that. Huh? Now, maybe not everybody buy this idea. Easy one. I pay three thousand to this this person. Uh. I get a uh, unit to stay, and the owner is just staying upstairs or downstairs. Very easy, very convenient. Uh, every day can come and do cleaning, babysitting, so I don't need to worry where to send my kids. And also after come back got food, uh, got clean clothes to, to, to wear and all this, right? So I think this is one of the good selling point. But I already have some thing. location. Uh. <laughs> no, I mean they are asking for that. Okay, location of the thing. Uh. 
where location? Uh? Oh, okay. This is just an example. Uh, okay. So don't take it so seriously, lah. Uh. Just an example. <laughs> okay. Now, now I ask you back, lah. Uh, huh? At first, ah, uh, I bought this unit for passive income. I thought, ah, uh, I can just own this unit right now. Sit at home, shit leg, ah. Uh, money can come in, you know. Passive income. But now, ah, uh, I got to do this, you know, cleaning, wash the baby backside, cooking, and wash people underwear, you know. Is this still a passive income? This is the question now. Is this still a passive income? I guess not. Huh? It's like a hotel already, you know. Hotel do all these things. Huh? They clean your room, they do laundry, and then midnight you cannot sleep. Huh? You call them, huh? they give you food, you know. Warm milk, somebody drink warm milk can sleep better. They cook you warm milk. So we are looking at NCB services. For those who have taken the tax paper, huh? TX paper, this is also that NCD services. These are additional services. Okay, many things here. Huh? So we have uh, cleaning, uh, cleaning, uh, laundry, uh, security, etc. etc. Alright, so if the owner provide additional services, then we ask the owner, are you providing significant services? I mean, one or two, okay, but if you involve too much already, then this becomes an active income. Okay, if you say no, I didn't provide significant NCV services, then this is still a passive income. Okay, good. Huh? Alright, let's move on then. So we got two more examples here to decide huh? uh, which one looks like PPE and which one looks like investment property. So let's look at property C, huh? apartment, the whole block. So this company could be very rich, huh? purchase a whole block and rent out. Provide security via the joint management body. Now this joint management body is that we get outsider to do. Huh? These are owner of the joint management body, JMB. Huh? Then they get outsider to do. So a lot of things are outsourced on, if you have this kind of environment. Provide cleaning only to common area, the corridor, la, uh, elevator cleaning, la. sometimes you got common area like playground, park, all to cleaning, la. and provide uh, leave swimming pool. If you compare this to donkey, uh, it's a block of hotel building rented out. Provide security services by own management team, so you didn't get outsider, you didn't outsource, you select your own security guard, and you manage them by yourself. Cleaning to common area and room to room. Hotel do that every morning also knock your door. If you don't want them to disturb you, you can hang do not disturb sign outside because you want to sleep until until from day to night, every day sleeping only. You don't want them to disturb you. They provide services, cooking, meal, laundry, provide leave and provide simple as well. So if I compare the two buildings here, I find that Donkey is quite active here. We involve a lot in our business. So this is like a PPE. No? Donkey is a PPE. And cat C no? is an investment property. Okay, got message. No? Hey, how come the ballet one? No? Chen will you want to review back your answer? Because your answer is the other way around, eh? different from mine. Eh? C involvement is not as serious as donkey. Eh? Because as you look at the cleaning to the room to room eh, itself already can be a deciding point. 
Normally when you rent things out, you don't clean room. You don't go inside the house to help them to do cleaning and this. Okay, wrong me type one, that's good. No problem, huh? That's another one. Probably like Singapore style. You may Singapore like that one. Room to room, so seriously one. <laughs> I don't know, Malaysia, we don't do that. Huh? Not until that extent. Huh? Okay, recognition. When can I bring this investment property to my account? It's actually the same as PPE. So you attended the last week class. Huh? Then you know that in order to recognize the PPE, we need to control the asset. Probable future defined benefit and the cost of the asset can be matched with the liability. All right. And the cost is the same thing, a cost of purchase, a direct cost, a direct cost, like for example, the legal here. I don't think of an uh, installation or delivery fee for investment property, TPE we can have, but investment property definitely we have legal fee. And sometimes you've got government taxes to pay also. The stamp duty and this, that not cheap, oh, not cheap, uh, stamp duty. For property of 500,000 ringgit, uh, including legal fee and government tax can be more than 10,000 ringgit that you got to pay for the ownership change, not cheap. <coughs> Plus initial estimated provision for demolition and restoration. Uh, let me ask you a question. Uh. You know this called this whole land, right? No, this whole land, uh. everybody can look at the chat box here, this whole land. In Malaysia, this whole land normally is for 60 years or 99 years. 60 or 99. Now, if I say the government want to lease for 6 years, only 6 years, you want to lease or not? You pay the market price of the land today, but you are allowed only to use 6 years. Do you want? No, 6 years only. Huh? Uh, but cases like Hong Kong, huh, they can have things like this. 6 to 10 years only. You don't want, you get out. Because the place is so popular. So if you want to do investment property in Hong Kong, right? Let's say you get a lease for six years or ten years, huh? after that you need to demolish the building already, you know. Unless you can pay to renew that something. But sometimes you want to renew also, huh? the government won't allow you to. Everybody take turn now. Not only you do business here, isn't it? Uh, so popular. Huh? Malaysia not yet, huh? uh, Malaysia can give you 99 years, huh? no issue. Huh? After 99 years, huh? lucky can extend, you know. So we thought that we die already, huh? government will take back, the government said hey, you want to pay or not. One more time the market value of the land and you can use for another 99 years. Mm -hmm. right. So that's why uh, you see, if you lease the land for short term to do investment property, you probably have to do a demolition. You know? You've got to remove remove that investment property. Same as PPE, you, know? you install the aircon, but after some time you've got to remove the aircon. So all these estimated costs are added together. Cost of purchase, legal fee, government taxes and estimation of provision for demolition all at inside. As your investment property costs are total initial cost, same as PPE. Okay, let's move on. Model. Now, if you can remember, for PPE, we got two models, right? Cost model and revaluation model. Investment property, we don't have revaluation model, but we have family model. All right. Now, the cost model is same as PPE. Right? Exactly same as copy and paste from PPE drop here to investment property for cost model. But family model is different from PPE reversion model, different. So I'm going to use this space here to write four differences between PPE reversion model, the one that you already know, huh? PPE reversion model versus investment property fair value model. Okay, let's do revision. Huh? Now for PPE reversion model, if you have chosen this revaluation model, do you remember how often you need to revalue the asset? You cannot do one time after they don't do it. You must continue to do. But do you remember how frequently, how often you need to revalue your PPE if you have chosen revaluation model? Anyone also can try. Huh? Or you can check your notes. Lah, huh? You go back to the first chapter. If you have jotted down anywhere for evaluation. There was an example with I written the revision David and credit on first time revision gain, first time revision loss. 
So how often we need to revalue our PPE if we use revaluation model? Ah, seven years? I don't remember I wrote that. No idea? Really, I didn't say that. Let me check your notes, huh? PPE. Here. Must be. Mm. Okay. Now, if you can go to PTE chapter, the first chapter, point one point three. Uh, not annually, no. I mean, you want to do annually also can, but it's not a requirement to do every year. Point one point three, everyone. My one is blank, uh, so I show you also meaningless. Uh. Let me see. Uh. Uh, when there's a significant change in property, I did mention that, yes, I did. Uh, yeah, 16, right? Now, point one, point three, yeah. Uh, my one blank already because I didn't save my writing. Uh. Now, I remember somewhere here I've written it has to be regularly, regularly, uh, when there's a significant change in property value. Now, it can be every year, it can be not every year, maybe every two years or every three years, okay? So that is the PPE revaluation model. Okay, let's mark it here. We go back to investment property chapter already. Here, here. We revalue regularly. Yeah. You want every year can, you don't want every year so can. As long as there's a significant change in the value, then you've got to do it already. For IP family model, right? This is annually, every year. Value change, value no change, I don't care. Just revalue it every year. Okay, second difference, huh? Now check this out. I change my screen to PPE first, huh? For revision again. Now you remember this? We have classes of PPE or what we call categories, huh? Classes, category, motor vehicle, land and building. Prime machinery are not here. We have furniture and fitting. I don't have enough space to fit them in. Or office equipment also not here, but by right we should have one. Okay, so why, why we want to segregate asset into classes or category is because we want to assign models. So let's say model vehicle, I want to use cost model, but then in building, I want to use reversion model. That one is allowed. allowed. Okay, so you break the asset into classes and assign one model for each class. However, for investment property, right, we cannot do that. One model for all investment property. So you only have cost model for everything or fair value model for everything. So let me write something here. On each class huh, of PPE, and this one is on all investment property. IP, right? The next difference, okay, let's check. Huh? I go back to PPE first. Huh? The next difference. Uh, in the last class, we ended at this example. Okay, it was about first time revaluation. We got a gain on revaluation, second time, we got a loss. And then I say, I use this example to demonstrate to you about the depreciation differences. Huh? Because this one, we don't have depreciation. Huh? Too easy already. So to add the difficulty level, one level up, I put depreciation. Yeah, nah. Okay, now check this out. Huh? So that means huh, whether you use cost model or regression model or PPE, you still got to charge depreciation. But for investment property, family model, we do not charge depreciation. Right? So on the left side here, PPE, regression model, we charge depreciation every year and on the right side here there is no depreciation eh, for investment property fair value model okay but be careful eh? check this out eh? for your investment property if you use cost model you still have depreciation eh? So it's same as PPE. It's only the fair value model of investment property that's no depreciation. 
Okay, one last difference, huh? You know when you do revaluation, the revaluation gain, revaluation loss, you can go to uh, OCI or PNL, right? So gain or loss on revaluation, right? Is either recognized to other comprehensive income where you have a revaluation reserve, or is recognized to PNL for the gain and loss. But for investment property family model, the gain or loss on fair value huh? is recognized with a profit loss only. So first time gain, first time loss, any time gain, any time loss, all go to profit loss. Okay, now if you compare the PP regression model to the investment property family model, right? You will find out that the IP family model is more straightforward. Like you don't need to decide how often you do the remeasurement. This every year you do it. And you don't need to break the investment property into classes because one model for all investment property. No depreciation and you don't need to care whether your value gain is the first time or second time, whether you have previous relation model and relation reserve, you don't need to worry about that. So it's very straightforward to have family model investment property. And for this reason, this up very carefully eh? in the exam, not many questions for investment property family model, not many questions. We get more questions for PPE reversion model. But sometimes like the examiner would like to play this with you guys, you know. He will put in the question investment property family model, right? But he put in the PPE treatment inside and asks you to identify which one is wrong. Like for example, uh, this gain or loss go to PNL here, right? He can put in the answer is OCI and ask you to choose which one is wrong. Then we know for investment property there's no way we're going to recognize anything for OCI. So this is the wrong answer. Uh, so that kind of question can happen. Uh. But purely just on the investment property family model, we don't really have many questions. Uh. Because it's too easy already yeah, for this one. Okay, are you alright? Yes, I hope you have. You're okay, lah. If you got question, you please ask. Huh? Okay, let's see. Okay, good, huh? Good. Now next one. Is it possible to have mixed model? Like some investment property we use cost model, some investment property we use a uh, favorite model. Uh, I think it's not possible, right? Because we have to hold firm to our principle is that. We choose one model for all investment property. That is what we know. But you know, uh, ECC exam, right? They really want to make it to the maximum, you know. It's possible, but it's a bit rare. Okay, can, but rare. Uh, huh? So normally we don't have one. Just one model for everything. Huh? So what situation? They got two. The second one you cannot understand today. Because second one is for leases. So let's skip that. Let's look at the first one. For investment property, where fair value measurement is not reliable. Huh? Not reliable? Hey, can you guys suggest to me, uh, those in the class and at home, uh, how do we find out the fair value of a property? Land, uh, house, uh, office, uh, factory. How do we find out uh, the market value or the fair value? Is there any other method or any method we can, we can use to find out? Ashwin, any? If I want to know the house value, <laughs> uh, you can you can ask the bank. But normally these bank people, right? You simply ask, they don't want to tell you. Uh. Unless you got transaction, uh, they got commission to take. Uh. Uh, you simply go, hey, what is the value? Uh? They don't care about you. Uh. So ask the bank is one, but not so popular method. Ashwin? Oh, we also got suggestion here. Property valuer. Uh. Now this property valuer uh, is another problem here. You got to pay them. No money, no talk. These are professional. No? You pay them, they give you a report. You simply call unless good friend, uh, good friend, different story. Like. Like you see in the, the same area, what, what is the property selling for? Uh, where do I find that then? Do I ask co -co -co -co, door by door? On the website. Our uh, website, yes. iProperty.com is one good example. <laughs> iProperty.com or Muda.mine. 
It's also good. Or you can talk to a property agent. This agent, right? You you buy, you don't buy, you sell, you don't sell, they, they don't care one. They, they like to talk to everybody. Very friendly one. But when you work a bit different. Because when you work are professionals. You want them to open mouth, you have to pay money. A bit different, huh? Okay, so these are the methods we can go for. Huh? We check the website, we call bank, we go to where they were, uh, we go to property agents, huh? these are the methods here. Yeah. So why why on earth, if you look back to the first point, huh, it says the fair value is not reliable. I think it's, it's rare here. Like for example, if the country is having a war. Having a war. Okay, or maybe what happened to Sri Lanka at the moment? Huh? The country got bankrupted, right? So how to find out the value? Huh? It's not that easy, you know. Or having war like Ukraine, for example. Do you want to go to Ukraine now? No, no one wants to go. It's having war there. Although it's not a very serious one, but still dangerous to go in. So you could have a lot of things stopped at the moment that we cannot expect certain information from that country. Okay? So let's write an example. Huh? Example, during a war. Huh? Can happen, huh? okay. Now, if during a war, you got no choice, huh? you got to use cost model. Huh? You cannot use the fair value model already. So if you look at the bottom here, I got three properties here. The company would like to use fair value model. And we know our rules very well. Huh? If you decided to use fair value model, all of your investment property must also use fair value model. So they try property AE, huh? yes, fair value model, no issue. F, fair value model, no issue, and G, unfortunately G, we cannot get the fair value. Maybe this property is in a country that country have, currently having a war. So we cannot extract information. So we got no choice to use cost model. So this is where the mixed model will come in. But very rare, like class, huh? how often we have war, isn't it? Not, not really. Like. I've got something to tell you before I move on to us. Now, let's say I am an accountant. I cannot accept this kind of mixed model. I cannot accept. I want everything to be the same. So I want to get your opinion. Can I move this back to cost model and move this back to cost model? What do you think? Because of one property cannot get fair value, I decided to reverse property F, property E, from family model back to cost model so that I get same model. Should I do that? Why not, Jessica? <laughs> oh, Jessica, right? O Olivia, not here today. Jessica, why not? What criteria we need? Huh? These are free choices. Eh? Okay, you say fair value is reliable, that's why it's better to stick back to fair value, something like that. Fair value is actually not more reliable, it is more relevant. But if you don't know, look at reliable, its cost is more reliable. Because the cost can be proven by the contract and the payment, so it's reliable. But the fair value is more relevant. And in the future, we'll go through a chapter called conceptual framework. For conceptual framework, it says that relevant information is a must. So that's why we cannot accept when you want to change backward from fair value model back to cost model, this is actually not allowed. But you want to change from cost model to fair value, this one is, is welcome, it's encouraged. So we cannot do that. Let me reverse this. Huh? And I write some small notes here. Huh? You cannot change fair value model back to cost model. Okay, so cannot change E and F. Huh? E and F from fair value model to cost model. It is never allowed. Okay, next, I got things to ask you guys. Huh? 
need your help again. Huh? Okay, so let's say my company has an investment property. Rented out. This is my property. Oh, huh? apartment rented out. Huh? Lately, uh, the tenant, uh, which is a customer, uh, said the unit got those. <laughs> I mean, in exam, they will not put things like this. Uh, but in real life, it can happen, isn't it? Right? The unit got those. So, no one. And I cannot sell out. Everybody know that the unit got closed. Up. So I need your help here. The unit has been empty for a few months. And there's in no way in any new future I can rent it out. And I can sell. So how, what do I need to do with this apartment so that I can minimize my losses? Huh? Everything keep empty is a loss. Huh? So what, what should I do with this? I cannot rent out and cannot sell out. Sorry? Expense. Expense, ah? What do you mean you write it off? Ah? Huh? I don't want losses, eh? And someone you advise me to write off. I, I, is there any other usage or whatever I can cut my losses? If I can't rent out, if I can't sell. You use it as a storage facility. Use it for as? Storage facility. A storage facility. It's an apartment that I don't care. Like I put my inventory inside. Uh -huh. Use it, lah. use it. Lah. Oh, I got a message. Let's see. Ah. Sell to government now. Ah. Where the government want to buy from you? The government also know got gold. Eh? Let's say lah. Huh? If they don't know also, ah, when their people come, ah, the neighbor will go and they bought you and the neighbor will go and tell you, you buy ah, about gold and all these kind of things. Ah. Now either we use it as our storeroom, ah, storeroom ah, or we put our stuff there. Lah. The outstation stuff you can benefit. Ah. You don't need to go outside rent house. Ah. The company got apartment go in. Very nice view of KLCC and all. They can go some more. Ah. Okay. <laughs> time to go in. So if it, it's possible, so the moral story is it's possible to have a change of usage. Of. Remember how we differentiate PPE and investment property is a usage. Huh? If you use for your own self, that is PPE. If you rent out, it's investment property. So now uh, this apartment could be reclassified from investment property to PPE if you use it for your own. Uh. Okay, I've got a message here. Uh. It can uh, development or create more business places. What does it mean? Huh? Do you mean I need to demolish the apartment and rebuild the whole thing? Now that is number one, a bit pricey, very expensive to do so. And number two, the ghost might not go away. Isn't it? I know this uh, Cheras area. Before I got married, huh, I stayed in Cheras area for I think three to four years like that. Huh? Huh? Uh, my one is at Taman Pertama there. Uh, not Makota is a bit deep inside. Lah. My one is Taman Pertama there. So I stay in the apartment. Then they say one of the landed house uh, got goes. You know. So change a few owners already. Then got one owner never believe it goes. So just go in and see goes. So the owner got money, you know. The owner demolished the, the house. Let it put under the sun for one year because Sifu says so. Let the land expose to sunlight for one year. The ghost will go away. So after rebuild, the ghost is still there. <laughs> this is what I hear, lah, okay? But I mean, even though I never see ghosts before, right? I also don't want to buy. Lah. If because people don't buy, I buy, I look stupid, isn't it? So I also don't want to buy. So I don't think a redevelopment can actually solve it. Lah. You really have to. Wait for a new owner who will never see goes on. Some people never see goes on. Some people very easy to see goes on. Uh, later on, we'll touch on that uh, when we look at the chapter of intangible asset. Hang on. Uh. Oh, I didn't share screen just now. Okay. Uh, this one, uh, intangible asset. So we can look at ghost things also uh, because it's intangible, right? Okay, coming back here. So you get the idea already, class. We can change the asset usage, change usage. But the standard is asking for actual change, yeah? not just the intention. That means you must do something to prove 
that you actually change. For example, you empty the unit already. You must do something I cannot just say. Okay, empty the unit. If you want to uh, rent out, then you must clear your office or whatever, like change usage. Huh? So let's go through this. Huh? Before we consider the double entry, how to change the asset usage, we got a story, a small paragraph here. It says, Entity, the business acquired a property, original cost $15,000 some years ago, and now they changed the usage, December 2012. At the point of changing the usage, huh? the accurate depreciation of the property, assuming the use cost model for PPE huh? is 5000 Now, if I circle these two figures for you to see, huh? okay, uh, I, I changed it to blue color, huh? otherwise it's this one, okay, this is cost, and this is a accumulated depreciation. That means the carrying amount uh, is 10,000. No? So the number value uh, is 10,000 at the moment, when they change the usage for the asset. And the fair value of the market price of the property is 18,000 at the point of changing the usage. So how can all these figures help me? Uh? Let's go to the first one. Okay, the first one. From investment property, want to change usage to PPE, or this one, see, see, or not Anna, or either one, either one, uh, own use or to sell out to PPE or inventory. So it's a story here, something like this. Uh. I got a property, I rented it out for many years, then after some time, I don't want to rent out already, I take it back for own use. Or I take it back to sell, to use to sell. Now talk about the use first. Huh? So you want to remove your investment property because you no longer use it as investment property. How do you remove that? Huh? You credit the cost account fifteen thousand and you debit the accumulated depreciation account five thousand. So you remove investment property with the net book value of ten thousand. Okay. Cost model huh? got depreciation huh? and then you debit your PP at ten thousand. So can I balance up my entry? Let me check. Huh? I credit 15,000, I debit 5,000, and then I debit one more 10,000. So the debit will be 15 and the credit 15. Huh? Can balance up. Huh? If I'm not using it as PPE, I can choose to sell it. Inventory, so I just debit my inventory at 10,000. Huh? That's all, all right? Now, look at this, huh? cost model for investment property, right? When reclassify to PPE, can I use reversion model? Yes, you can because this is a new starting point. So you do not need to follow back the cost model. You want cost model can, you want ratio model also can. So this is a new starting for your asset. We will assume all these are new asset. Okay. One more thing to tell you before I go on. Huh? Now look at this inventory. Huh? Not everybody sell property will classify the property as inventory. Not everybody. Now you look at the furniture shop, for example, a furniture shop. The furniture shop will classify furniture as inventory. That's right. But furniture shop will not classify land and building as inventory. The furniture shop don't sell land and building as a main business. So who can classify land and building as inventory? There must be property company, the property developer and all these people. So uh, for property company, I just call it uh, property company, so you can classify it as inventory. For non-property company, uh, you cannot put inventory. Uh. For non-property call, selling property equals to asset half for sale. Okay, this one we got a standard IFRS5. Huh? I have uh, no space, uh, too bad. Okay. <laughs> IFRS5. Huh? Okay. 
All these are in your syllabus. Uh. You will learn all this one day. Here, yeah, FR is number five. Okay, let's summarize this before we move on. Huh? What happened here? The company want to change the usage. Initially, they use the asset as investment property. Now they want to change usage. Let's say they want to change to PPE or they want to change to inventory. So we just do a reclassification now. The investment property book value ten thousand. Remove that and debit to PPE or debit to inventory. But again, not everybody can classify property as inventory lah, unless you're a property company. If you are not a property company, want to sell property, you can call this as as a help for sale. I A four S five. We will discuss this. Well, this month itself, uh, 23rd of August, we have a class dedicated for IFRS 5. After that, we learn foreign currency. Uh, same day, uh, two topics in the same day. Okay, let's move on. We are still on the change of asset usage. Uh. Now, the other way around. PPE, change to investment property or inventory, change to investment property. Now, how can this happen? Uh? Let's say, for example, I have a factory. Now, factory is PPE, uh, factory. Uh. But I don't have enough uh, order. So my factory about 40% not used. So what do I do? The 40%? I rent out. Okay, I rent out. So I got PPE. Now change to investment property. Or maybe I have inventory. I'm a property developer. I develop a lot of houses. Cannot sell. So I rent out. No choice. Okay. We turn to investment property as well. So what do we do? Now check this out. We remove. PPE, uh, book value 10,000. Uh. So you remove the cost account, remove the accommodation account, you remove the 10,000, and then you debit cost model. Uh, okay, great. Investment property 10,000. But to inventory, a bit special. Uh. Inventory, there's no depreciation. Uh. We don't depreciate inventory. And do you remember why? Because in the last class, I touched on this. Why do we not depreciate our inventory? Anyone would like to try? Because we don't use it, that's why we don't use it. Depreciation is the cost of using the asset. Okay? We don't use inventory, so we don't have depreciation. So when we do the reclassification, you see, uh, it's only 15,000. Uh. There's no depreciation to remove. The book value is still 15,000, so you credit inventory 15,000 and debit the investment property 15,000. Yeah, excellent. So it's starting to get more and more and more and more difficult. Huh? Slowly, slowly. Huh? Okay, moving on. C, uh, C. Now look at C. C looks like A, you know, right? Because A just now, also from investment property to PPE, or from investment property to inventory. But now C uh, is that uh, the investment property is a fair value model. But just now, if I look at A again, uh, the investment property is a cost model. Uh. So a bit different, uh, a bit different. C, C, back to C. Uh. IP, fair value model, has no depreciation. Yeah, we know that. Fair value model, no depreciation. And then we, we measure the asset annually. Uh. So that's why you see 18,000 here. Uh. It's the latest fair value we have. Uh. 18, so we credit PP, uh, investment property 18,000 and debit PV 18,000 or depending on the usage, debit the inventory also 18,000. Eh? Can I use cost model for PV after this? Yes, you are welcome to because this is a new starting point. You can choose your model for PV, cost model, nah, regression model, nah, no problem at all. Just choose your model. But inventory is always the same one. Nah. The lower of cost or NRV. There's only one thing. There's no model to choose uh, for inventory, the lower of cost or net realizable value. Okay, those who join online, uh, if you feel that you have anything to ask or I'm too fast, you just let me know. Uh. Don't have the mindset, uh, never mind, later I watch back the recording and I will understand later. You probably won't watch back the recording also, so if you've got questions, you better ask now. Uh. Clear your doubt before I keep on moving. 
Okay, next one, next one. Donkey. Now, donkey, uh, I put a small star here because we have quite some ask your question talk about this thing. Which I understand uh, because this is the most difficult one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's wrong here? Donkey looks like boy, yeah? Yes. Look at boy again one more time. Boy is PPE or inventory change to investment property. Donkey also. PPE or inventory change to investment property. But in donkey here, uh, donkey here uh, is fair value model. Just now boy the investment property of cost model. Okay, I got the question here. Now if property is leased, was expired, how's the treatment? Uh? Lease expired, uh, ayo, this one. Uh. Okay, never mind. Chua, let me let me tell you first. Uh. This is under the IA for S16. Okay. So in IA for S16, uh, let's see. Has to debit one asset called rights of use and credit the lease liability. Oops. Lease liability. Uh. Okay, so the rights of use will be depreciated. The rental period. This one, no one should take it down uh, because in the future we're going to do this again. And the lease liability uh, will be held at a amortized cost model. So this one need one or two hours like that to explain. Uh. <laughs> this one, I think today I will try to avoid all the leases thing. Uh. But just to answer Chua question. If the lease expired, then how? It's good enough. Uh, the right of use will be depreciated. If your rental period is for five years, uh, then the right of use asset will be depreciated over five years. When the lease expired, they accept them to zero automatically. So you can clean your account very, very smoothly. Uh, no problem. But it's not relevant for tonight. Uh, because we are talking about change usage at the moment. Uh, change usage. Now, coming back here, investment property, fair value model. Uh, if you use family model, then the asset must be updated. Huh? Must be updated to fair value before. Okay, let me put all capital letters here. Before reclassification. So before you put the asset to IP, you must update the value already. before reclassification. Okay, let's move forward now. Huh? Donkey again, huh? of a little star here because we have a few passive question over the years that talks about this thing. Now, if the standard requiring you to update the asset to fair value, like remeasuring the asset to fair value before the reclassification, so you got to start from the PPE first. Huh? Now, PPE, we know the carrying amount is 10,000 now because we got the cost, we got the account depreciation. If you want to increase, from 10,000 to 18,000, there's a gain on revaluation of 8,000. Right? So this will create you a reversion reserve. So you must do this first before you classify the asset to investment property at fair value model. So how to do that? Huh? Same thing, like you remove your PPE, huh? remove the cost account, remove the equity position account, recognize the gain, and debit the IP. So debit side 18, debit side 5, 23,000, Credit 15, credit 8, also 23,000. Balance, debit 23,000, credit 23,000 as well. Later on, we got a question on this one. Uh, to look at the exam scenario. Okay, what if the starting point is an inventory? Now, if the starting point is an inventory, uh, 
then we don't have depreciation. Uh. So we just use cost 15, increase 18, there's a gain of 3,000. This gain uh, is inside the profit or loss, cost of sales. We hide it inside the cost of sales. So the cost of sales will reduce uh, less cost than more profit. Uh. Reduce the cost of sales. <coughs> so that you get more profit here. Can I balance up my entry? Yes, I can. Credit 15, credit 3, credit 18 already, and debit 18. So debit credit, same amount. Can balance them. Okay, move on. Page four. Huh? Okay, page four. Page four easier, easier. Huh? Talking about work in progress to completed investment property. <coughs> so what's the story here? Uh, they built property, cost fifteen thousand, completed December two zero one three uh, one two, and then the fair value at the date of completion is seventeen thousand. Market value lah, huh? has increased huh, for the property. So what happened here, uh, we have to see whether your policy is to use cost model or your policy is to use a family model. If you use cost model, what you do is you just remove your book in progress, completed already, and debit to investment property, you expect the same cost now, because cost model. But if you go for a fair value model, right, you have to update the value first. Now. So from 15, increase to 17, then you add again to recognize of 2000 in the PL. Now, this is your other income because investment is your passive income, right? No, it's other income. And then you take it back to investment property of 17,000. Okay, this is not that difficult. The donkey one is a bit complicated. Alright, moving on. The recognition. So when do I remove my investment property from the account? Uh, two situations we can remove. Number one is disposal. If we sell our investment property. Or number two, when the property is permanently withdrawn from the use. Nah. We don't use it already. Okay, disposal or permanently withdrawn. Alright, let me share screen to here first. Huh? <coughs> now look at this this building. Huh? I have this building is my investment property. Huh? Then it has a physical damage by natural disaster. Maybe got earthquake, huh? maybe got very serious flood. Huh? Then a lot of crack here and there. We ask the property expert come and see. The expert say this building very dangerous already. Now cannot stay. Compound cannot stay. Also, oh, uh, so dangerous already. So what do I do with this? Uh? Cannot stay. Cannot rent out. Cannot sell. So any suggestion here? What should I do with this thing? Reconstruct. Bomb it. Flat it, reconstruct it, is a bit expensive. So we have to see the management whether they got money or not. If they got money, they do. Let's say they don't have money. Right? Reconstruct is one good alternative, but money, la, pocket, no, I cannot do. So what do we do? If cannot rent out, cannot sell, cannot use, and got no money for reconstruction. We just leave it. We just leave it. Okay. You know nearby here got the uh, condominium that collapsed. Uh. Penting Tower. Uh. It's just nearby here only. Many years already. Uh. Something got goes there. So after the class you can go and check it out if you are driving you just drive to Penting Tower there. You see uh. They say the land is actually not suitable to build high rise. Uh. So that's why in the nineties there was the one afternoon. Uh, Call that. Hmm? 
nearby here only the... Where is it? Huh? Highland Tower. Ah, Highland Tower. Not Kenting Tower, Highland Tower. There's some, some name that one. Ah. So, oops. So they say got ghosts there. Ah. If you're interested, can go and check out. I think some of us know about this. Ah. A bomb meet and then do a parking lot. <laughs> it's also one good good solution here. Lah. But if you really have no money to bomb it, right? You can just abandon it. Lah. You check with the government, can we just leave it like this? Because it's dangerous. Lah. If government check already, government says, okay, I can just leave it. Lah. Then we leave it, lah. we go away. Lah. No money, lah. what do you do? Just leave it. Lah. So look at the Highland Tower. Is it Highland Tower? It's abandoned just like that. Lah. And some sake of ghost inside lah, okay. Then last time we got a lot of overseas TV maker that come here to shoot video. They got ghosts and all this. One of the popular one lah. Yes, yeah, you can check it out, okay. And then along the Jalan uh, Raja Chulan lah, Bukit Pinang area, you can see some uh, bungalow unit houses abandoned, just like that. I don't know what happened to these people lah. Maybe they got rich already lah. They migrated to overseas. And they will never even bother, they got a unit in Kuala Lumpur, yeah, that could happen. So if you have a permanent abandonment, uh, okay, let's come back here. You, you just abandon it, uh, you write it off, uh, no more usage, uh, cannot bring in any benefit, and it's not your asset anymore. For disposal, if you've got him a loss, uh, abandon confirm is a loss, uh, okay? but for disposal, maybe you've got him on disposal, you recognize the other income in the profit loss. Uh. So we don't get OCI at all, uh, no OCI for investment property. It's just the profit loss. Okay, we have some time before break. Huh? Let me tell you what happened to the question practice. Huh? I got three objective tasks. Okay, we finish this before the break time. And the O star uh, is a homework one. Same as a PPE, uh, I uploaded the answer for PPE. Eh, also take one. Uh. Highlight, uh, okay. Okay, your homework, uh, huh? the O star thing. So in the old days, uh, in year 2013, uh, like that, uh, the student got to answer the exam on the blank paper. So you guys now very lucky. Uh. You get story and you get five questions. Short question, but last time they get blank paper only, you know. If the mind blank, uh, the answer is also blank. So you will consider lucky. Like, so I'll upload the answer for this, uh, don't worry about that. So you do three objective test questions, then we go for a 20 minutes break. Uh. Okay, let's try the first one. Uh. Which of the following should be recognized as investment property? Let me highlight some keywords. Uh. They are looking for. No, oh, this is too. too dark. Okay. They are asking for investment property. But in the console financial statement of the company. Not a single company, it's a group account, huh? console account. Okay, let's check the first one. Huh? A property intended for sale in ordinary course of business. So they buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. This is inventory. Huh? So A is not the answer. B. Property being constructed for a customer. This is also inventory. Constructed property on behalf of the customer. People order and then we do. So now we only two choices, C and D. Eh? Property held by build call as a right of use and rented out for a six month lease. Property rent out. Looks good. Okay, looks good. How about donkey? Eh? Can donkey challenge our answer here? Property owned by us and we rent it out to subsidiary. Huh? How to say it's own use? Eh? Rent out eh? Uh -huh. And then? Uh -huh. And then? And then? Yes, in the console, right? Now, in the group account, right? The intercall transactions are eliminated. So from the group account, there is no rental. We remove already. Okay. So intercall transactions are eliminated. So there is no rental 
in the group account. Uh, So the good list is PPE, yeah? because it's used by the subsidiary in the group. Second question? Second question got some calculation here. Okay, they're asking for amount in the reversion surplus. That means they want to know the amount of reversion reserve. Huh? Reversion reserve, December 2 is very easy. Right, so let's find out the reversion reserve. Following a delayering exercise, that means they remove staff. Huh? The company empty an office building. And read it out. Now, office building was PPE. Huh? And when they rent it out, it becomes an investment property. Alright, so from PPE to investment property. The building had original cost of 900,000 some years ago, like, 2 is like 0, and our year now is 2 is like 8. Huh? It was being depreciated over 50 years. It was judged to have a fair value. Uh, this is the rent out data. The date should exit at the point of renting it out, it had a fair value of 950,000. When it comes to year end, the fair value has increased further to 1.2 million. And they're going to use the fair value model for investment property. Now, I need you to look at the screen for a while. Huh? Okay? TPE to investment property, and the investment property is fair value model. This is donkey. Uh, do you just now, right? I've got a question on that. So if you look at donkey uh, from TPE, change to investment property at fair value model this is the one so what we got to do is at the point of reclassification when they change in usage huh, we have to do one time revaluation to see how much the reaction reserve is so that is what the question needs us to do check back the question again i highlighted that they are looking for the revision reserve only <laughs> Okay, so what I want to do is, I want to do a revaluation, right? I want to compare the carrying amount of the asset at 30th June XA. Leave some space here for me to do calculation later. Versus the fair value also at the same date, 30th June. Uh, 2 0 huh? So I know the fair value at June XA is 950000 Next is to find out this one. If I got this one, I can find the answer already uh, for the revaluation. Okay, now let's, let's do this together. Uh. I need you to tell me this. When they purchase their asset January, 1st January 2020, to the point of changing usage, June 2020 is when they start to rent out. For how long, how many years they use the property as PPE? Uh? You got fingers, huh? I think 10 fingers enough. Lah. Eight years. <laughs> From X0 to X0. Oh, sorry? Eight years. Eight years? Seven and six months. Seven and six months. Okay, those at home. I got suggestion from those in the class. We got eight years. We got seven and a half years. What do you guys get? Huh? This one I'm asking you, ask me back no more. Uh, 8 years, 6 months by Chua. Is it 8 years just now? 8 years? Some say 7 and a half, then they change to 8 and a half. Here got 8 and a half, 8 and a half, 8 and a half. Let's count this together, alright? Now start from 1st January X0 uh, to 1st January X1. X0, X1. One year, right? So 1st January X1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, until January, X6 is 8 years already. Now. 
then some more I need it to, to June uh, is eight and a half uh, eight point five eight and a half okay now this is important uh, do practices don't feel upset because we don't normally do this this is something we get confused uh. you make me say in the class is okay no make me say in the example uh, we think money uh. so we got cost of nine hundred thousand minus 900,000 over 50 years and they have already depreciated 8.5 years before we change the usage um, the phone is currently used as a webcam no? that's why no, my time, uh, calculator here Seven four seven like that. Okay. okay what's next on half? Mm -hmm. Nine fifty. Eh? Seven four seven. Nine fifty. Two o three. Eh? So this is a again on revaluation. So why do we get that 1.2 million that one? Uh? This is to confuse us, uh, the 1.2 million. Uh. Because we turn the asset to investment property after June, right? So when it comes to December, uh, this is already the IP value. So investment property value will go to PL. It will not go to the regression reserve. So this is something to confuse us. Uh. Uh, if our basic not strong, uh, we can fall into trap to use 1.2 million to calculate. Okay, one more question before break time. Huh? Next one. This one, no calculation. Huh? Just theory only. Huh? Uh, of the four, they're asking this is the wrong one. Which one is not true? First one. Following initial recognition, investment property can be held either at cost or fair value. Now, this is true because we got cost model and fair value model to be chosen. B, for an investment property held at fair value, this must be applied to all entity investment property. Now, this one I believe is true as well lah, because it was the original intention of the standard to use only one model for all property, unless you got rare situation where then you have have the uh, mixed model. C is also true. Huh? Investment property is that cost including transaction cost like legal fee, that's true. So the only answer is donkey. Lah. Now why donkey is wrong? Lah? Because it suggests that investment property value changes to put OCI. This is for PPE, lah, not for investment property. Lah. It's for PPE only. Alright, so we have completed the chapter of investment property. It's not a big thing. We don't have many passive questions. So there's one old style question for you to try, which I will upload the answer to assist you to the portal here. If you've got a question to ask, please feel free to leave a question in the chat area. For those in the class, you can come forward. Now we'll go for 20 minutes break time. Huh? So we continue the class after 20 minutes. You are quite open to possibilities. I mean, the world is so big, we never see it doesn't mean we don't have, right? I never see ghosts before as well, but I sometimes read somewhere and then watch YouTube and this, that. Huh? Now, even the white guys believe in ghosts. But their understanding of ghosts is a bit different from ours. Their understanding in ghosts is, ghosts is an energy. It's an energy that it has its frequency, the wave. So why sometimes people can see ghosts, why sometimes cannot, is that our brain wave uh, are different one. So for that, right, the scientists in the white man country, uh, they design a kind of camera 
they can adjust the wave to track the ghost and to shoot the video. So I don't know whether it's real or not. Even nowadays, a video also can edit that one, right? But I I buy the theory is that if you want to see goals, right? You're so keen buying to see goals, you got to find way to adjust your brain wave to lower. That's why small kids can see goals easier, because when as a small kid, your brain wave is lower. So goals energy very weak. So they are wave lower. So as long as your your frequency you adjust to their frequency, ah, you can see them. So if frequency lagi more ngam ah, you can touch them. So it's just like radio ah, you adjust the manual radio frequency. So how accurate you can tune the frequency to that. Now one good way for those at home and in the class want to see ghosts, right? And this is the ghost month of Chinese this month. Good opportunity once a year. You want to see ghosts, right? You have to find out your Deep sleep time. Deep sleep. Now, what is deep sleep? Ah, uh? when we sleep, we got different layer. So, when, after we sleep for a few hours, right, we will enter into the deep sleep time. Deep sleep. Now, what is deep sleep? Is you got the mouth saliva come out that one? Ah, uh? you totally cannot control your body anymore. All the water all come out from mouth that one. Ah, uh? that is a deep sleep idea. Uh? So, at that point, ah, uh, your brain wave is the lowest one. Very weak. Mentally, very weak. So that time when you wake up, let's say uh three a.m. four a.m. like that, ah, uh, you wake up, you want to go to the toilet, right? You very weak, and normally you don't open your eye one, you don't open the light also, you don't on the light. That is the best time. You gonna see ghosts. So maybe tonight lah, uh, set alarm ah, uh, three a.m. do one ah, uh. three a.m. or four set alarm. Wake up, close your eye, go to the toilet, look into the mirror. Good luck ah, uh, you can see one, you know. Huh? If you didn't see, then your brain wave that means very high, oh. <laughs> I I never see one before, lah. Okay, I don't know whether I will see one in the future, but I really never see one before. But I have examples of people surrounding me that have seen ghosts before. I really have, uh, the two ladies. Okay, you never see Bella go to Highland Tower Trail, lah. <laughs> Now, class, why I want to bring this up, uh, is because. We sometimes, right? If you hear people say you have seen ghosts, ah, can you tell me how you see? Not that we want to see, ah, but we want to avoid, lah. <laughs> how to see? I mean, can you identify? Eh, can you identify ghosts? How to identify? I don't know. They say they can feel, they can see, they can touch. But how do you identify? Can you look at the notes here? Let's come back to the business environment, ah. How do you identify your intangible asset? That is about the same thing, lah. How you identify goals versus how you identify the intangible asset. Yes, it's about the same thing here. Now, why are we so particular about the identifiability? Because intangible asset is something that we cannot see, is something that we cannot touch. So, how to identify? Let's see. You have to first be able to separate it up from you. Asset, ah, no goals already, ah. Come back to the asset now, ah. Separately sell. Okay, separately. Separately, sell or rent out. Ah, okay. I need you to give me an example now, everybody. An asset that we cannot see, cannot touch, that we can sell or we can rent out. I mean, table and chair cannot qualify already, lah. Table and chair we can see, we can touch. Any asset that we cannot see and we cannot touch. Okay. Royalty. Did you say that royalty? Yes. Huh? Brand? Okay, now royalty. Um, in what accounting standard for IFRS 15, we're gonna learn that. The problem with royalty is it's kind of like cannot confirm. We have to wait for the other side to make sales first. Then only we can take percent. So it's a bit hard to justify the royalty itself. I said, but brand is a good one. Brand, we cannot see, we cannot touch. We can sell, we can brand now. So we have examples, huh? From the chat, let's see. Uh, Bitcoin, yes. Uh, good view also, yes, reputation and all this, uh. Bitcoin. Okay, Bitcoin is a very modern example, uh, digital coin. 
that we can sell, we can rent out. Uh, rent out no, but sell can. Uh, huh? Rent out cannot. Good view, I will come back to this in a while. So we got an example from Hashwin. Uh, Hashwin say uh, brand name. Okay, now maybe some of you say, hey, brand name we can see, we can touch. Man. Why brand name is intangible? Uh, uh, not quite true. Uh. Now if I draw you a shoe, right? I'm not a good artist, uh, so there we mean a shoe. Uh, okay, with three stripes. Uh. What brand is this? Uh? Adidas. You don't even need to see the name. You see three stripes, then it's Adidas. See number four, this is a fake one. Uh. This one got no this one got no value one. Uh. But this one got value of three stripes. Uh. Now why? Uh? Why when put three stripes means got value? Why? Uh? Brand recognition and it is well known for quality. But are uh, all oh, Adidas product good quality? I dare not to say uh. Some not so good quality one. Some very expensive but not comfortable to wear. All right. But generally, we believe when we look at Adidas branding, we believe it has value. So brand comes from belief. Okay, belief. So that's why it's intangible. So example, brand eh, that we can sell or we can rent out. Got another message in the chat area. You have copyright also. Copyright, we can sell or we can rent out. Copyright is also our intangible asset. We can use the copyright to make money. Now, how about my license, uh, let's say? License, I cannot rent out. I cannot sell. Now, my driving license, for example, I cannot sell to someone. I cannot rent to someone. But luckily, uh, you look at this word here, or, right? Or, coming from legal rights, license is also identifiable. <clears throat> okay, if you want to update your notes, please do so. Uh, then I'm going to come back to good view. Some of you suggested good view just now. Huh? I, I checked the name first about what to talk about that. Okay, when you say good view, huh? so we're going to talk about good view before we move on. Huh? Whether good view is intangible as well. Now one more time, class, one more time. In order to identify the intangible asset, you must be able to prove to everybody that you can separate it out from you. Either you sell it out or you rent it out. If you cannot sell, cannot rent, you must prove that it is coming from a legal power. That license or contractual power. How about good view? Eh? Let me ask you. Eh? Can we sell our good view? Depends item. Wow, okay. Example. Knowledge. Good view is good view. Knowledge is uh, copyright and intellectual property. Or maybe I'll ask you a question now. Uh, okay. You know this brand, right? Okay. This brand uh, good uh, got reputation uh. if Adidas sells the brand to Bata. So after this Bata will make Adidas. Can the good view be carried forward? I mean the brand you can transfer, but how about the good view? If Bata make Adidas, do you want to buy? 900 ringgit make by Bata. Many years ago, right? This car company called Proton, Malaysia, purchased a car company called Lotus, which is a sport car, the high performance car. If you are rich people, do you want to still want to buy Lotus, which is owned by Proton? Many of their engineers resign you know, because of this. They don't want to be owned by a Malaysian company. So I think we don't have that kind of synergy. Branding you can transfer, but good view and reputation might not be. If I'm, <laughs> I might not want to buy Adidas produced by Bata. I have some help there. Oh, okay. You want to buy, better buy Bata one. Uh. What is this? Uh? LVHM, what is that? My name? Uh? Uh, <laughs> H&M. Uh? 
But what is LV? Huh? Louis Vuitton, okay, LV and H&M. No. Hey, Chun Sing, what is that? Huh? LV, H&M. I'm not a good fashion person. Huh? Can you explain a little bit further? <coughs> Okay, while waiting for Chen Sing to explain further on LV, HM and what about that, the story. It's the full name for the Louis Vuitton brand. Louis Vuitton brand, uh, normally we just call it LV. Uh, huh? It's a corporate, quite a lot of expensive branding. Like Ray Ban also. This, this company, uh, okay. Sorry, uh, I don't buy all this stuff. Uh, I don't. LV, uh, Louis Vuitton. Uh, okay. Now, anyway, let me give you another example. Uh, if you didn't get this clear. Now, uh, you know my credential since the last class, I'm an accountant, I'm an MBA and this, that, right? So let's say you haven't graduated, you've got problem finding jobs, right? You haven't finished your exit, got problem getting high pay, got problem getting job. I think don't worry, just go to the company, tell them you are Mr. Ng student. They will get you one. They can even name you CFO because of me. Cannot, you know, the good view, uh, the reputation cannot be carried forward just like that. You can bring brand name or whatever, but good deal, the customer recognition might not be there. All right, so that is one problem here. It's hard to transfer good deal. If you argue can, then have to give certain justification, a certain example or what. So good deal might not be able to be so brand name can. Yes, good deal might not be. Cannot be rendered out. And good deal uh, didn't come from legal rights, right? You study the law or whatever, there's no law say you must have a reputation, you must have a good view. So that's why, uh, class, if you, where's my chat? If you look at in accounting, right, we can only recognize purchase good view in console, not the Internal good view. So we can do this, huh? debit good view, credit bank in the group, account, but what we cannot huh? is we debit good view and credit income. This one we cannot do. You cannot create one internally. You can only buy in the group account some more. Right? So a bit tricky huh, on this good view thing. You learn more about the good view thing in the group account data. So this is a bit tricky here. But most good view will not be able to be transferred to someone else. Huh? Okay, coming back here. So how to identify our intangible asset? Check whether you can separate them out, separately selling it out, separately renting it out, or it's coming from legal right or contractual right. Then you look at the middle box here. Definition of intangible asset. Identifiable, which we have gone through this already. Huh? non monetary asset without physical substance. Okay, this one we got no problem understanding it. It's okay. As long as you cannot see, you cannot touch, it becomes an intangible asset. But what is this? Huh? A bit tricky here. non monetary asset. So let's look at monetary asset huh? okay, or, or monetary item. Huh? Let me delete this. Huh? Monetary item only huh? because we got liability also. Huh? Monetary asset and monetary liability. Now let me know, when you see monetary, what does it relate to? Huh? What can you think of when you see monetary? It sounds like money. Okay, so for example, cash, money. Okay, why money is monetary? Look at the chat box, huh? money. Huh? So let's say I got ringgit 10. Use this to buy ringgit eight um, food. Can I do that? I got ten ringgit. <coughs> the red color paper, huh? ten ringgit. Can I use this to buy eight ringgit food? Can I? Okay. So I get food plus RM two king. So the RM ten out and in food worth. RM8 plus RM2 king. 
So that means uh, monetary that the value uh, is fixed and determinable. this tower and then we try to understand what is the meaning of non-monetary item so basically this means the opposite uh -huh, non-monetary item <clears throat> okay so let me go to the chat box for a while huh? let me type something to the chat box everybody can see huh? so non-monetary they are opposite huh? Value is negotiable. It is not fixed. We can always talk about it. Can you give me examples, please? Any asset or whatever that the value is not fixed that we can negotiate the value. Actually, many examples, many examples. But just give me one or two. Lah. Can go, uh. Uh, okay. But the latest one, uh, the NFC card, uh, the coin, NFC card. Can use phone to reload one. But your phone must have the NFC function as well. Uh. So you just use the card to touch your phone and then you can reload everything. Bullshit out of this. Why so troublesome? Why not just use our online reload? It's a very troublesome company. Okay, touch and go. But I don't think the exam will talk about this one. Maybe I give you one here. Land, for example, is negotiable. The seller wants to set a very high price, so we negotiate for a lower price. Uh, I think inventory also, uh, we can negotiate. Uh. Go into the shop and then we, we try to buy more so we get a lower price. But unfortunately, class, if you look at the <coughs> chat box here, land and inventory, they are tangible assets, isn't it? <coughs> but we are studying intangible assets. So let me come up with some suggestion here <coughs> okay um, here right now huh? okay non monetary huh? okay non monetary value is negotiable huh? We have many things that can be negotiated, many many things. <clears throat> so we got tangible, we got intangible. If to focus on the study here, I just give you the intangible example. Lah. So for example, we got brand, license. If you can sell, lah, if you can sell, you cannot sell them too bad. Lah, if you can sell. Uh, copyright also, if you can sell. <coughs> Excuse me. So this few example, uh, we actually got a list at the bottom, we shall go through them later. Uh, example of intangible asset. Uh. Let's come back here then. Alright, so identifiable non-monetary asset without physical substance. So that means that class, if you look at the left side, left side tonight, I am not going to talk about cash. I am not going to talk about receivable, payable and loan. Tonight I'm going to talk about brand, license, copyright at this time. Okay, great. I got one question to ask you before I move on. Uh. Let's look at the chat box, everyone. Let me ask you a question. Uh. I know cash is a monetary asset. Uh. I know that because 
value is fixed when this is determinable. Is cash an intangible asset? It's not for tonight, right? It's not for tonight, but as a general, uh, no. Oh, I've got private message from Kaylee some more. Actually, no need private message. Huh? If everyone also can. Okay, why? Those in the class, do you think cash is tangible or intangible? Tangible? Intangible? Can you get some cash to show you? But I say no, but they ask why no, no answer already. Huh? Cash in bank? I ask you a question, you ask me back a question. So what do you mean? Cash in bank, physical or, or intangible? Because physical item. Huh? Okay, so I'm holding a 5 ring. I didn't turn on my camera. Never mind. I'm holding a 5 ring gate note here. Which is plastic, uh. okay? Plastic, uh. Now let's say I owe you five ringgit for the lunch money or whatever. I got to pay you back. If I give you this plastic five ringgit, are you okay? Pay you back, okay? Uh. Now if I don't want to pay you this, I use a online transfer. Are you okay? Okay, also. Uh. If I don't do online transfer, I have my e wallet, uh, touch and go e wallet. I transfer touch and go e wallet money to your touch and go e wallet. Are you okay? So, uh? Yes, I'm not giving you the physical paper. I don't give you the physical paper. I just do digital transfer. You see, okay. Ah? So that means money is intangible asset. Ah. You try to bring this 5 ringgit plastic, go to USA and buy me something and see. Do you think they accept it? Is it because you got the plastic in hand? If you have it, no, they don't believe in your money. This 5 ringgit is good only in Malaysia. You bring to Singapore, also no one to accept, you know. So money comes from value of belief. People believing it. This why ringgit value drop. Uh. Why? Uh? No one believe in it, you know. No one think Malaysia is good for anything. This why the ringgit value keep on going down. And government say it's a good thing. Uh. I don't know how good it is, uh, but government say it's a good thing. Uh. Alright, so let's make a conclusion here. Cash can be valuable. Huh? and be valuable both physically and digitally eh? right okay so cash is actually an intangible asset but not covered It's still an intangible asset, but it's not covered by the standard that we are studying today. It is under IFRS 9, another accounting standard. So tonight we just talk about non-monetary items. Cash, receivable, payable, loan, everything, they are under IFRS 9. The one you learn. When? Let me check. Financial instrument. Basic instrument. Okay. Oh, tutorial is video lah, but lecture, at least the lecture, the last day before Mateka day, one day before Mateka day, you study that. Financial instrument. Cash, receivable, payable, and load and this that. Okay, alright, so let's let's continue now. So now we know tonight's coverage is more on branding, license, copyright. And when can I recognize the asset in my accounts? It's actually the same as PPE. You need to control the asset, the asset must bring in feature account benefit, the cost of the asset can be much reliably. Now, but one problem uh, for intangible asset, cost can be problematic. So for intangible asset, it is harder to prove. Uh, because we cannot see, cannot touch. Uh. You want to prove the cost is a bit more difficult. So that's why the, the accounting standards say, uh, if you buy, then okay. Credit bank, 
debit intangible asset if you buy anything because the value oops the value is there right? huh? for internal right cannot you internally generating a brand cannot you internally generating goodwill also cannot okay now let me ask you a question huh? how you generate good reputation can you give me an example please how you generate good reputation what, what, what can you do to make yourself popular how to promote good relationship with customer produce good product uh, on time delivery, produce good product, buy high quality material, always try to fine tune your manufacturing process to reduce cost so that you can deliver good product at a lower price. IKEA doing that, uh, they claim, uh, okay? but recently I see their prices also increase already. Uh. So we actually got quite a few methods to promote the relationship with the customer. But unfortunately, uh, all these are internally generated good relationships. With the customer so you spend money to make sure on time delivery you spend more money to make sure the product quality is, is good all this will be expense off cannot be capitalized run business with uh, honesty and sincerity uh, okay that's good as well but normally in business uh, if you are too honest uh, you end up closing shop uh. okay that's what chinese believe uh. in business must be bad a little bit uh. too honest cannot make money <laughs> Okay, uh, it's not good to teach you the bad thing, uh, but let, let's, let's come back here then. All right, so no recognition for internally generated intangible asset simply because the cost is cost measurement uh, is very hard to prove. Uh. That's why they don't allow that. Except for research and development, which go about it later, and software development. So remember, internally generating good view, reputation, and even the customer list, uh, all these cannot be capitalized. Uh. They don't allow that. If you buy can, you buy the brand name can, no problem. You buy the customer list can, no problem. You can capitalize them. Okay, move on a bit further. Measurement model is actually same as PPE. We do have these two. Eh? We do have the cost model, same as PPE. We do have reversion model, which is same as PPE as well. Eh? Same. So first time gain goes to OCI, first time loss goes to PNL, everything the same. Same as PPE. But we have one trick here. For intangible asset, if you want to use the revision model, uh, the asset must be quoted in the active market price. So if you don't have this, uh, you cannot use revision model. So for intangible asset, the asset uh, must have an active market price. Uh, in order to use revaluation model Okay, now let's look at this. Huh? What is the meaning of the asset must have an active market price? Huh? In Malaysia, not many examples. It's a very sad country we are living here. It's not many examples here. But in the white man country, we have more. Now, if you look at the awareness to care about the environment, is the white man country better than us? Huh? In Malaysia, I tell you, huh, you don't talk about environmental friendly first. You have to first educate Malaysian when throw rubbish, throw inside the rubbish bin. 
that one is the first education they must go to. Don't talk about pollution and all this first, because they don't even know how to talk about it properly. And then in the hot country, right, the government will penalize you uh, if you don't care about the environment. Let's say, for example, you are the car maker. Your car maker, the car use petrol and produce a lot of harmful gas. They call it carbon emission. So if your the car that you make produce a lot of carbon, you get penalty. If the car that you produce uh, didn't have much carbon emission or totally no carbon emission at all, like electric car, you get incentive. You get points. And this point in the white man country can be sold to the market. So you get points from government and then you can sell to the market. And who can buy those points? Eh? It's those car makers who cannot make the good car. Lah. The car maker cannot make the good car, must buy this point in order for them to continue to do the manufacturing. So they have this kind of active market to sell the points and to buy the point. Malaysia don't have. Malaysia don't care. Eh? You buy hybrid car, not much of incentive. You buy electric vehicle, very expensive. Eh? And then no place to charge also. In Malaysia, there is no incentive to go environmental friendly, not at all. So you don't have this kind of example. Anyway, in the exam, right, to use regression model for in, uh, intangible asset is also not common. In the exam, we see a lot of cost model for intangible asset. To use a market price is not for PPE. Uh. PPE, no such restriction. For PPE, you want to use ratio model anytime you come. But only for intangible asset, if you want to use ratio model, you got to make sure the asset can be traded in the market with the market price. So got some restriction there. Okay. Now let's move to the right side. Uh. Amortization. Now this is same as depreciation. Uh. I don't know why they call it amortization, uh, but because to me it's the same as depreciation as well. Okay, same as depreciation, uh, amortization. We have two types of use to life here, class. One is finite use to life, which is limited life. Limited. And what is indefinite? What do you think? If finite is limited, indefinite means? No, it's not unlimited. No, I hear that. Uh. If you say it's not from you, it might be from goals one. Okay? Hey, class, those at home, uh, what do you think? If finite is limited, indefinite means it is not unlimited because unlimited is infinite. Infinite. Infinity. Uh, infinite. Indefinite. What is the meaning of indefinite? Anyone want to try? Not sure. Yes, not sure. Cannot determine that's great. It's unknown. Unknown use life. Okay, I give you an example. Uh. Can you estimate the future useful life? Uh? <clears throat> or how many more years? Uh? Adidas can stay popular. <clears throat> how many more years? It's a quite an old brand here, very old brand. But as of today, it is still one of the top in the sport way. Later on, we can discuss a little bit what are their secrets. Huh? Why they stay for so tall? Because I know uh, a lot of us uh, don't want to wear old brands. Like, oh, they want my father wear, I don't want to wear old brands. Huh? Like when I buy shirts also, uh, I try not to buy the brand of Crocodile. Crocodile. You hear a Crocodile brand? I think it's the father and grandfather time. Huh, they wear. Now they're still selling, I don't want to wear Crocodile. Huh? Sorry? Polo, uh, don't know, uh, but crocodile particularly is banned. Uh, I don't want crocodile. My father wear crocodile. And, uh, 30 years. Uh. Adidas, 30 years. Uh. Uh, how do you come up with that? Uh? Any uh, reason or whatever that you believe that Adidas got another 30 years only? And how about 
this one, okay, if you not sure. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, branding of Coca-Cola. Depends on their marketing strategy. Now, I believe uh, they are constantly making new strategy to make sure it stay popular. They stay popular. But to Coca-Cola, I think it's a bit dangerous. They also feel that because we know that it's not healthy. It's actually good for nothing. Uh. It only tastes good. People even wash toilet with Coca Cola and find that it's very effective. So, if you can clean toilet, that will happen to your body organ, isn't it? So, maybe we have more and more people having this health conscious that they will drink less and less Coca Cola. So, Coca Cola also venture into other branding. It's still under them, but they do other drinks already. It's not just mainly based on Coca Cola. They do cooperate with big brands like McDonald's and this, that. Alright, okay, great. Now, if you ask me to estimate, I for Adidas, Nike, uh, Coca Cola, Pepsi, or whatever, or even Toyota. Toyota, uh, Toyota is also a good brand for car. I do not have the confidence. Uh. So we can actually term all this as indefinite useful life, unknown useful life. We have no confidence in telling the useful life. Now, if it is like that, right? Very good. If you got asset with indefinite life, you have to stop the amortization. You don't even know how many years, huh? so you don't amortize, but you got the test impairment annually. What's the meaning of testing impairment? Impairment is under IAS 36. <coughs> so this is a video lecture huh? after tonight, huh? IAS 36, how to test impairment every year. So no amortization, but got the test impairment annually. Anyone heard of this brand before? Let's look at the chat box. Kodak? Kodak? If you say yes, then you are of certain age already. Wow, <laughs> well, Juliet also have heard before. Oh, camera. Eh, actually, they got the brand not from the camera. They got the brand from the camera film. If you have used film before, lah, put the film in. Uh, that's why last time, uh, uh, photo shooting is very expensive uh, because it's per film. You take wrongly, no delete. Uh. Every click is money. Uh. That's why everybody said, hey, you laugh, uh, you adjust everything. Uh. After 10 minutes only, you should. Now, very simple one. Just not nice, uh, delete, uh, click again, uh, digital. Uh. Now, call that uh, until 1999 uh, was top one film maker. Ask me, uh, what is the useful life of this branding code date? In 1999, I don't know because it's top one in the world, right? 2001, close down. Just two years later, they closed down their film making division. Why? Because we have digital camera already. Man. So we don't use film anymore. So don't you think, your class? Two years ago, when I want to estimate the useful life of Kodak, I can't do it. But two years later, I can already. It is dying soon. So, the accounting standards say, if you cannot do now, never mind. You review the life every year. Review the life every year. So, every year check. Can you estimate? Cannot, never mind. Try next year. Can you estimate? Cannot, never mind. Try in the every year check whether the useful life can be determined. <clears throat> if change to finite use to life, then account for the change as if it is a change in estimate. Okay, what is estimation changes? Huh? Tonight cannot tell you, huh? sorry, huh? this is under IESA. How to change estimation? Because at first we estimate, we don't know the life, right? If later on we estimate, we know how to do the accounting. Estimation changes. Finite life, very easy. Huh? Finite life, you just amortize. Huh? But there is no initial scrap value because intangible asset after the life has ended cannot sell. Huh? No one to buy from you. It has no physical form. Cannot see, cannot touch. Very hard to sell. 
right? So for finite noise, just do the amortization, but there's no square value estimation in definite life, no amortization, test impairment every year, and review the useful life every year. Okay? Now, talking about cold data, I want to tell you a bit more about this. Side story, huh? not relevant to the accounting standard. Huh? The cold data was killed by digital camera. Am I right? Okay, huh? Which company first invented digital camera? Do you know? Hmm? If I ask like this, I think you know which company. Not Fuji. No, not Sony. No. Is this company called Kodak? Say no. Kodak invented digital camera technology in 1970s, very early. 1970s, before I was born, you know. At the time, their designer presented the idea to the directors. The director said, Don't do digital camera. If you do digital camera, our film cannot sell. So they feel very comfortable uh, to sell the camera film. So they cannot develop the digital camera. Uh. But you know, in this world, right, if you can think of something, other people also can think, isn't it? You don't do, doesn't mean other people don't do. Eh? So other competitors start to develop digital camera technology, and once it got popular, Kodak was killed by their own first invention. So this was used a lot of time in the management study. If the management refused to change, you just have to die. Eh? Kodak is a good example. Killed by their own invention. They don't want to change. Which I think is good, uh, let them die. Uh. Otherwise, uh, as of today, I've got to still use a film. You know? There's no innovation, there's no improvement. So, this is a bit of side story here. Uh, okay, Kodak, uh, lousy company. Uh. But, but they make a lot of money last time uh, by selling the film. Okay, let's move on a bit further now. Example of intangible asset uh, software. It's not the CD that counts that uh, class, it's not the disc. Uh, huh? People don't buy. Software because of the plastic. Uh. People buy software because of the content. And then software now you can download from online, isn't it? So this is the best proof uh, that software is an intangible asset. Patent and copyright refers to uh, intellectual property, knowledge. Uh. So all these we cannot see, we cannot touch. It's intangible asset again. Motion picture film, which is movie. It's also intangible. Do you guys still go to cinema often nowadays? No, huh? Why not, huh? Covid, guy. Uh? No time, okay? Why? <laughs> Good reason is no time, okay? No time, Covid, or ticket expensive, or how about this, huh? We can actually watch a lot of things on YouTube. And a lot of new movies we can watch for free, you know? But they want a side story, la. cannot tell in the exam, also you watch a free movie online and this stuff. Uh, but if you want to consider another option, uh, got quality, also got some new movie, is Netflix. Uh. Netflix is quite affordable. If you sign up for the most expensive package, uh, you can share four account. So you just find four friends and share account. Uh. Everybody pay less than 20 ringgit per month and you get this Netflix thing. Sorry, uh. So Netflix is a good example that movies are intangible. You cannot see, you cannot touch, but you can play. On the phone, laptop, your smart TV, and this that. Okay, I've got the chat here. Let's see what happened. Tor is blocked by my friend Islam. Eh, I don't think it's fair to bring the whole Islam things out because I believe within them also they got different divided opinion. But this is the government decision. Nah. It's not the Muslim decision as a collective decision. It's a government decision. Eh, they didn't explain why, right? People speculate lah. It's because of the kissing sin or whatever. Mm -hmm. But no big deal, right, Chuang? You cannot go cinema. You can always find another way <laughs> to watch this thing again. Okay, let's come back here then. Customer list, ah, huh? customer list. Yes, this one you can generate, but for internal cannot lah. Huh? If internally generated, cannot. Uh, 
uh, then cannot recognize that. Hey, can I ask you a question in the class? Can we buy customer list? Can we buy? We can or sometimes we receive call from don't know which insurance company want to sell them the way they get our number, they buy now. Buy from who? We also don't know no? because we keep our phone number everywhere. When we register for our handphone, register for our Unify, they got our number. So I don't know who sell, la, but they can buy. If buy can, huh? internally generated cannot. Franchise is a brand name, like for example McDonald's, KFC and this type of franchising, brand name, which is an intangible asset. Alright, let's move on. Research and development. Okay, now we can make a lot of things in RD. Making movie is one good example. Okay, for example, Make movie, yeah. Now, before we make movie, what should we know? Because making movie is a big budget, uh. you need explosion and this that, uh. So, what should we know before we make a movie? What do we need to find out? Story. Story. I think we need to find out what people like currently. If you look at cinema now, uh, we have a lot of superhero. Any color. Any gender, any skin color, as long as they are superhero, then people will watch already. How about ghost movie? Eh? Lately, any ghost movie? Eh, not quite much, but we do have a lot of superhero movie. Lah. How about love story? Eh? There's a chat, let's see. Love story? Need music. Eh? What is the meaning of need music? Are you talking about musical uh, movie or whatever? Need music, what is the meaning of that? Eh? Okay, the summary I can get at the moment eh, is that we have a lot of superhero movie, a bit of ghost movie, about totally no love story. Cartoon also get less, eh? on and off, like one year later, one or two, right? In the cinema here. Now what we want to do that is that we have to find out the customer taste here. Bollywood. Uh. Okay. Not quite a big market, uh, I think. Oh, music background. Okay, but let's look at the movie again. Uh. I think we need to find out the taste of the customer first. So we got to do research. See, uh, research, what is the meaning of research? Uh? Is to get new knowledge. Like for example, finding out the customer taste. I out customer table. <clears throat> hey, I tell you uh, the Hollywood ghost movie are uh, not creative at all, no. It's always a family move to new house and the new house got ghost. It's always on, you know. So that's why they don't make it anymore. My customer already boring. Uh. Hey, can you do something else? Uh? Always the family move to new house and new house got ghost. But the superhero thing can sell uh, at the moment. Uh. Whatever man, woman also they drag out. Uh. Very good. So if, let's say after we find out the customer taste, uh, is continue to make superhero movie. Then you make superhero movie. If you find out that the customer no longer interested in superhero movie, then we will continue to find out what actually they like. In the research phase, right, when we are doing a trial and error here, yeah, I, I do admit that uh, this is a trial and error. So we try things only. Uh. So these are expenses. Uh. You cannot capitalize research costs as your asset cannot. They're just trying things, uh, trial and error. Expenditure incurred, recognize the PNL. After you found your direction, you want to develop. In my example here is to make movie la. Okay? So we develop the movie.
Do you know that when they make movies, uh, they come up with a few ending one. They don't just make one ending. They try to make two or three endings and then they compare. And they will also invite some sample group come and watch which ending you prefer. Okay. So let's say everybody prefer ending B. So they make like ending D. After that, they tell you, uh, if you after visit cinema and you go and buy DVD, uh, the DVD got another ending. Also, everybody can buy DVD again. Uh. That is how they make more and more money for the same movie. So that is the development phase. Uh. So in the development phase, what we do is we apply the new knowledge we get for improvement, developing the movie. <coughs> Shooting movie can take months uh, to years depending on the progress, a few months to a few years. Once the development ended, uh, we we'll go for production. At the point of production, whatever things that we are producing, whether the production of the copy, la, DVD, la, or whatever, la, all these are IS2, production costs. <clears throat> but what happened to my development cost? Uh? This one we capitalized as intangible asset already uh, for the few months or few years. The development cost, we will start to amortize. Uh. But before you finish your development, the asset is not ready for use, so there is no amortization for that few months or for that few years. So research cost, expenses, development cost is intangible asset, but you do not amortize. Once you finish the development, then only you start to do amortization yeah, for the few months or for the few years. <clears throat> okay, write whatever you need and ask questions if you have any. If you look at the bottom here, I got some arrows pointing down, right? We actually get another example here. In the research phase, we study into competitor new product. So competitor launch a new product, we get buy the product, study the product, and we also want to study how it affects our customer. So at this point, we are doing things on a trial and error basis. We do not know how this is going to help us. So the research cost will be expenses. After we found our direction, we would like to come up with new product to balance our competitor. Competitor got new product, it must have also one, isn't it? So we got five sample products. These are called prototypes. Huh? Technical name, huh? prototypes. Huh? Sample. Huh? Okay. So we work on five prototypes and we eventually choose one for production. To make these five prototypes, to test them, to choose them, it might take a few months to a few years. So every day when I spend money during the development phase, huh? I will capitalize the cost, huh? so I will debit intangible asset and our credit bank every day. And I spend money, credit bank, debit intangible asset every day. And at this stage, right, you must be confident. Huh? Confident about technical and commercial feasibility. That means can make and can sell. You must be confident on that. Intention and resources to complete. Ability means resources. No? And finally, that something will bring you good thing in the future. You must have this confidence. If any of this is not here, you cannot capitalize your cost already. Huh? You must put your cost as expenses. So you've got to meet all these. All these three points before you can capitalize your spending as your intangible asset. So after the few months or few years, you finally have chosen one for production. So that means the development has ended. Huh? Start to manufacture the product for sale. And this will be under the IAS tool. Huh? Inventory, huh? when you're making the product to sell.
Right, just a bit more before we end the lecture. Can you go to the next page here? <coughs> page two, huh? Eh? Wow, we spend so much time eh, on page one. See, let's look at page two here. What is this, huh? Eh? In process research and development acquired in a business combination. Uh, it's quite a long thing here, but in short, that eh, it means this, huh? Eh? Parent acquired subsidiaries research project so subsidiary got a research project and the parent go and control acquire this Okay, what's the story here? The story is like this. I look at this three parties relationship. Eh? We got the parent. This is us. Lah. We are here. Lah, the parent. We want to buy the subsidiary. So we got to talk to the previous owner of the subsidiary. So this is the old parent. Now the game is very simple. Listen very carefully. Eh? The old parent want to sell the subsidiary at a very high price. But we want to buy at cheap price. Eh? Because we have a conflict of interest. So we discuss. We ask these old owners. Why do you want to sell the subsidiary for such a high price? The old owner say, the subsidiary has started a research project and this one is going to be very successful next time. But we got no reason to believe, isn't it? Huh? Is, everything is by your words. Huh? Can I like preview this research project? If not, I don't believe it. So the old owner agreed that we can go into the subsidiary company to take a look at this research project. After looking at the research project, we found out that this thing is really good. So we are willing to pay for the subsidiary plus the research project, pay extra. So this is a story. Parent acquired subsidiary research project. Okay, that's great. Now, let's structure this all again. Huh? We want to buy the subsidiary, but we got to pay extra because of this research project, right? So what happened here is the date of control, 1st January 2014. Cost incurred up to 1st January before we came in as a parent, uh, before we control, uh, this is pre-acquisition. Before we control the subsidiary, the subsidiary already spent 10000 Now, do you know for subsidiary, research cost, do we put research cost as asset or expenses? Uh, research cost? Uh, research cost expenses. Uh. But from group point of view, the group acquired, so this is asset. This 10,000 in the subsidiary account is expenses, but this 10,000 in the group account is asset. Because the group acquired the asset. We pay and then we buy, right? Okay, now let's continue. Huh? After 1st January, this is in the post acquisition period already. Huh? The subsidiary will continue the research project, right? Every day they spend money actually huh, for the research project. So after we control, the subsidiary spent additional. Huh? This is additional $5,000. It is still a research. So can you let me know, please, in the subsidiary account when they spend research cost? Is it an expense or an asset? Research cost. Mm, if research is expenses, huh? the group for this additional 5,000 also expenses. So the only difference is when the parents step in to control the subsidiary, the initial cost will be an asset in the group. This is the only difference. 
After that, everything follow the R&D, research costs, additional research costs, continued expenses in both subsidiary and the group account. Now this, this area came out a few times already in the past year. So anyone, if you go to the exam hall, this sitting, uh, you should be sitting for December, uh, huh? okay? I don't find it surprising if you see this again, no? because I've seen a few times in the past question already. Yeah, on this area. So take a look at this, if you've got a question to ask, please ask. Yeah? Almost ending, huh? let's look at software now. Software. Now we can buy, we can develop. If you are a big company, you can develop. Huh? Small company, normally everything they buy. Huh? So if you buy, you capitalize. So you debit your intangible asset and your credit bank. Huh? Very simple, huh? you buy and capitalize. If you internally developing your software, right, you follow the R&D rules. Huh? You do research first, how you improve your internal process. After the research, then you develop the software. So research expenses, development capitalize. Huh? Same one. Okay, one more point. Operating system. <clears throat> I need this from you, huh, class. Let's look at the chat box here. system examples <coughs> Windows Microsoft Windows oh, iOS huh? got this iPhone uh, Android also okay, these are the few popular ones that everybody knows huh? but actually in the factory right for their factory production machine huh? they also got their own operating system but that one maybe we are not familiar with it is their thing huh? but these three are good examples uh, normal computer laptop, Windows, and other phones are Android or smartphone. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Huh? Okay, my laptop, let's look at the box. My laptop, if without Microsoft Office, can I still use the laptop? If I didn't install Microsoft Office, can I still use the laptop? I think we have a lot of free versions online. Huh? Even Microsoft got online version one, free one. You can just go to Microsoft.com. Huh? You can use a free one. You can do printing, but you cannot download. Huh? You must have an internet stuff. Alright, great. Yes. If I do not have Microsoft Windows, can I still use my laptop? You try to turn the on button, you get only the black screen, isn't it? No Windows. You cannot use the laptop. So now we have a decision here. Can you look back to the notes here? For operating system, is included in the hardware cost. So that means uh, OS is PPE cost. Because it's needed for the installation. Installation cost. Without OS, your asset is useless. Right, so there's the decision here, operating system, hardware cost. Huh? One last area before we try a few questions and end the class at huh? 1.5. If you see this, any of these five, huh? you just put them as expenses. <clears throat> First one, internally generated good view, expenses well. Any cost you spend to promote your reputation, any cost. Okay, so any cost to promote reputation 
will be expensed off. Including cost, look at this. Advertisement. It's also to promote your reputation. Promoting the product, also promoting the reputation. This one actually upset a lot of big branding, you know, like Coca-Cola and Adidas and this, that. Huh? Per year, they are spending billion of USD on advertisement worldwide. But the accounting standards say the billion USD that you have spent for your advertisement must be expense off. They feel very upset. And they try to argue, hey, I promote my product, huh? it's for the product, you know? it's not for my reputation. Yes, for my product. But unfortunately, you see when they do advertisement, right? They always include their logo, right? It's not just a product alone. They always put logo. And then the product finish already, they put their big, big logo come out, isn't it? That is for reputation, no? Too bad, huh? So next time in the exam, or even in the workplace, in the office, you see advertisement, expense it off. Cannot capitalize, okay? So internally, general goodwill, expenses. Advertisement, expenses. And the business registration, look okay, at second point, yeah, startup cost. Yeah. This is a business registration cost. That one is also expenses. Yeah. Cannot be capitalized. Next one, training cost. This is human cost. Yeah. Why human cost cannot? Huh? Okay, can you look at the chat box? I type something there. To recognize an asset, you must control it. Am I right? PPE say this, investment property say this, intangible asset also say you must control the asset. If you don't have control, you don't have an asset. So let's let's come up with a with an example. Can a boss the staff, for example, stop them from leaving. So this is a question that some of us might want to know also. Huh? Can our boss stop us from leaving? Because sometimes we have a case like this. Huh? We want to resign, so we give letter to the boss. And boss says, I don't want to accept this. You take it back. So we go, huh? You don't accept, okay, I take back. No need one. You, you don't take back. Then I put here, no? Tomorrow I don't come already. So can boss actually stop us from resigning? Or how about sign contract? To bind the staff. Bond, uh, okay? Sign contract. So we sign contract with the staff that for three years you cannot resign. If you resign, we're going to ask you to pay compensation. Is it a good way to stop the staff from leaving? No. If I resign. I have to pay compensation. Okay. Compensation. Huh? This will only discourage me to resign. It will not stop, but it will discourage me. If I can find Pay that compensation. I can leave, right? I can leave now. So why the new boss want to pay this compensation? Huh? We sign contract with the new boss. Huh? I don't like this old boss already. So I ask the new boss, I'm willing to sign three year contract, but you got to pay my compensation first. Huh? Okay, no, no problem. Huh? So all this contract to bind the staff huh, are useless. Huh? You can only slow down them to resign but you cannot stop them so the conclusion is we cannot control human so training costs are uh, expensive 
That is the reason we cannot control them. Hmm. Okay, good. Next one, relocation. That means we move office. Now, move office will be expenses as well. Huh? Cannot capitalize. Lorry cost, uh, this and that. Uh, all these are expenses. Relocation of office. Okay, great. That is the end of this second accounting standard lecture. So we'll go through some questions huh, before we end the class for today. Huh? Okay, let's put this together. Page 3, page 3, we have this section B style question. So what do you get for section B is that you get a story. Oh, so many things here. Okay, you get a story and then you get five questions. Now some of these five questions will not need you to read the story. Some you need to. So how to know that? Huh? The question will give you the hint. Huh? For example, if you look at question 55, huh? can you see this? There is a company name here, right? So that means this question, you must read the story. Huh? Some question has no company name. They just ask for general things. Like for example, you look at question 52. Huh? Which of the following should be recognized as intangible asset? So this is a general question. That you do not need to read the story. Huh? Okay, so let's answer question number 52 first. Huh? Which of the following as a general question should be recognized as intangible asset? Patent for new drugs, medicine now, license for new vaccine, and training course. Training course is automatically out. Huh? Training huh? must be expenses, huh? cannot be intangible asset. So we have only two choices. Uh, it's either one only or one and two. License. Okay. Patent also okay, right? My notes mentioned about this just now. Mm -hmm. So one and two looks good. Huh? They can be recognized as intangible as that. Okay, that's great. Let's move on. Question 53. Huh? Which one of the following uh, is one of the criteria? They only ask for one. Huh? Okay, one criteria for recognizing development costs as intangible as that. Uh, we have a general criteria here is you have to be confident uh, that the development is good. Must have the confidence that the development is good. So maybe you can spend uh, one or two minutes here reading the four options. Only one that you have confidence that the development is good. Okay, so let's look at the suggestion. Huh? Okay, Chen Sing say donkey. Huh? Never mind, we can still wait for the others to reply. So I keep donkey as KIV first. Huh? Any other suggestion other than donkey? Eh? Hmm, okay, let's look at the chat box here. Ah, donkey as well. Huh? Okay, without wasting your time, huh, let me run through these four options and choose the best one. Eh? The asset has been completed and is available for sale or use. Now, if it is completed, that means it's very, very confident. Huh? But in fact, huh, the standard never asks for that, you know. The standard say, if you look at the timeline that I put in, uh, as long as you start the development, you already can capitalize. You don't need to wait until completion, you know. At this point, as early as this point, you already can start to capitalize the, the asset. So A, I think it's too much already. Uh. It's not actually required. Uh. It's good, uh, but it's not actually required. So you don't need this. You, you, you don't need this completion. Number two, it is possible that the asset can be sold or used. Now I find that this possible got another word probable here. Many of us do not know how to differentiate this. From a business perspective, right? Possible is lower chance, while probable is higher chance. 
So lower chance means you don't have the confidence. Eh? The probable seems good. That's why I think some of you have chosen donkey. Eh? Except with genetic probable future, it comes higher chance to get a good thing. You got the confidence there. C is not required as well. The first it means the money. Eh? I never say that you need to estimate the money. As long as it generates you probable future economic benefits, that will be good enough. Then. Okay, well done everyone. It's donkey the best answer of the three other uh, four options. Eh? Okay, next question. Uh, next question. Which one of the following would be an example of research cost? Now, research cost means you are still doing trial and error. We cannot find our direction yet. We are still trying things out. We don't know how it will lead us to research cost. So, we might like one or two minutes again, read to the four, and choose only one that we are still doing trial and error. We haven't found our direction yet. Okay, anything here? Four options? There's only one that we are still not sure at the moment. Okay, let's see. Huh? Uh, okay, twice. New answer is boy. Yeah? Okay, uh, boy as well. Uh, how about those in the class here, yeah? physical class? Boy. Yeah? Okay, let's see. Huh? Design and construction of chosen alternative. So you found a direction. Chosen. So you found a direction. So this is a development. Okay, it's not a research anymore. Design pre-production prototype and models sample. Before production is very late already, isn't it? Before production. You develop sample. This is also development or too bad. Okay. Design of possible new or improved product or alternative process alternative. Possible, no chance. This is still trial and error. No chance. No chance to be successful. You you don't know, you just try whether it can be better. Design, construction, and operate a pilot plant. This is also a prototype, huh? pilot sample. Huh? They just use different words to talk about the same thing, prototype. Huh? Okay, so this is also development. Huh? So thanks to this is possible, it tells us that this process is at the moment they have a low chance for us to be successful. There's two more questions, uh, ending the class quite soon. Uh, just hang on. Next question. We have this company called uh, Temiviti, uh, whatever the company. Uh, okay. To find out the patent, you send us that amount, year end, March 2004. 10 million, 9 million, 15 million, no million. So, this is what we need to read the scenario case. Uh, so, let's move up together to find these two things. This company name and this asset. Ok, 
Okay, so this is us. Uh, Excellent D is the public listed company. I've been considering the accounting treatment and there are some matters bothering them at the moment. 31st March 2004. On 1st October 2003, this is six months before year end. Uh, because the yen is March 4, right? Okay, six months before the yen, the parent acquired a subsidiary. So the subsidiary is specializing in medicine research and development, uh, pharmaceutical drug. Purchase consideration was by way of share exchange, but I'm not interested in this. I want to find out the pattern, uh, based on pattern here. Purchase consideration value 35 million. February asset 15 million, excluding the item below. This company, uh, our subsidiary, this is what I need, right? And the pattern is also what I need here. For an established successful drugs that remain life of 8 years, the advisor tells us that the current value for this patent is 10 million. However, the subsidiary is still waiting for outcome of a trial where the drug has been tested to track a different illness. If the trial is successful, then the value can be 15. But you, you see, uh, the problem with this 15 million is they have this word. And they have this word Eva. That means it's not sure, isn't it? If successful, they only get 15. So this is not sure. Lah. Not reliable. The current value looks good. Lah. 10 million lah. looks good. So I don't want to choose 15, but I want to choose 10. Also included in the financial position, 2 million for medical research that's been conducted on behalf of a client. So research is supposed to be expensive. Lah. But when you're doing this for client, right, it becomes your inventory. Right? Because you're not doing this for yourself. You do this for the client. So whatever the result is, the client will pay. So that is your inventory. But if you do it for yourself, huh? you do not know the outcome, your expense is off. No, so there's a difference. Yeah. So we got a pattern already, huh? 10 million, but we need to charge 6 months depreciation. Huh? So how it will look like is, if I go down here to do the calculation for you to see, I've got 10 million minus out, 10 million divided by 8 years, the total useful life, and we only use it for 6 months, because we control the subsidy only for 6 months. So we prorate our depreciation charges, 10 divided by 8, 2 minus 10, okay, so I get 9.375 million. Okay, so the answer is this one, uh, the second one, uh, 9375. Okay, let's move on. One last question before we end the class for today. Eh? Oh, uh, this one too bad. I just have to give you the answer straight away. Actually, some of you should know already uh, because you learned basic console before. But if you say you forgot, never mind. It's my job to revise the basic with you, but not today. Uh. Consolidation earliest. Uh, the first class to learn console will be 4th of October, sometime later, about two months from now. Uh. So let me just tell you the answer here. How the parents should take the goodwill arising on the acquisition of subsidiary? The answer is B. Uh, capitalize and review every year. But exactly why you have to wait for two months later uh, when you learn the group account. So we discuss about this again. So we don't amortize the goodwill. Uh, we don't impair every five years and we don't write it off to return earning. We capitalize the goodwill as an asset and test impairment every year. That is a treatment required by the accounting standard. Okay class, whatever that we can do tonight, we have done it. So if you've got no question, you can lock up to take your good rest. Before I see you again this Saturday, 2 to 6, huh, do another two accounting standard. 
So you've got questions, you can stay back to us uh, to post your questions to the chat box. For those in the class, you can come forward to us. Otherwise, good night everyone. Uh, I'll see you again a few days later online. Okay?